Rise and shine! All right, thanks, Eric. Uh, so yeah, Dragon Quest Seven is very long, so I'm going to start it and then talk about it. Uh, have everything I do have everything. Here we go. Swap her over to dis fast disk speed here. I do not know why Discord is capturing audio right now. I'll figure that out. I may or may not have some guests at some point during this run. I tend to fall asleep during disk two. So, oops, I don't want to continue. <laughs> Maybe we'll have someone pop in and keep me awake there. Feeling good right now, though. I don't want to save. Whatever, we'll save. Oh, you can't save over a new file at the beginning? That's news to me. I don't want to put my save anywhere but slot one or I'll load the wrong file. This is going well. Let's say I'm restarting this over and over so that I can name the hero DQRTA instead. No. Let's go. Give me the Maribel. Alright, there we go. So yeah, um, I'm starting the timer on power on here. Just because this game's so long that I've been timing it JRTA instead of normal SRC timing, which will start when Maribel talks, uh finishes talking to us here. Um, Alright, I think my audio is fixed. So, yeah, uh, the 18 hour estimate, that is not a typo. This game is very long. Saw a lot of people commenting on the 12 hour estimate for Dragon Quest VIII. Well, <laughs> didn't want to say anything at the time, but yeah, this run's about 50% longer. Make sure my controller's set up. Okay. And we'll get into why it's so long. But uh, essentially, it's just content. There just is that much game. A lot of dialogue in this game. A lot of side quests, subplots you go through. Uh, we'll see shortly that there's going to be 18 different islands that we have to warp to. And each one has its own side quests. Some of them longer than others. But each one going to take us about a half hour or longer to get through. Um... And then on top of that, there's other stuff we're doing outside of those islands. And then that's just disc one. This is a two disc RPG. <laughs> well, here we are opening up the game uh, with this FMV to see our hero with his black leather gloves climbing out of a hole here in the ruins up north, which we'll get to later. But for now, we're talking to Maribel. Um... She just asks, you know, are you going to tell me where you've been sneaking off to? I say yes because it's faster than saying no. She scolds you if you say no. That's just how Maribel works. Um, so something you're going to see a lot uh, during this run is me using the wrong turbo speed on my controller and not interacting with things. Um, also, rotating the camera. So, Dragon Quest VIII, it was mentioned uh, that, you know, walking diagonally in that game is faster than walking straight directions. In this game, it's the opposite. Walking north and south is faster than walking east and west. So, we want to do that as little as possible. So, I'm going to be rotating the camera so that I can walk up and down as much as I can. Um, in so oh, okay. 
In some areas, I will settle for uh, walking diagonally. Essentially, walking north and south, that's the fastest. Diagonally is about 90% speed. Left and right is about 75% speed. Uh, it's just kind of a... I don't know. They probably did it on purpose because of the camera perspective. They thought it looked like you weren't walking faster. North and south. I need to grab this. A lot of little herbs and junk that we're going to be picking up in the beginning here. And we can have an herb here, and we'll go to the boat. It's the fish festival song. Yeah, have this. I was slow, so that guy's in my way now. Find Maribel here. So, we are, at this point in time, living on the only island in the world. There's no land anywhere, just ocean. Except for this little island we're on. We're in the town of Fishbell. Not to be confused with Maribel. Um, all the adult men are about to go off on their big fishing trip. Uh, which is kind of just all that there is to do in this world. Uh, as soon as he gets back, he goes on another fishing trip. So, uh, <laughs> It's not like an annual thing. He, he chills for a few days and then they go fishing again. Why not? What else are you going to do? Just this little town here and a castle and some ruins that are forbidden. Uh, but of course, we being the hero, they're no nowhere is forbidden. I mean, we can go wherever we want. Um, yeah, that's our dad there on the left with the beard. That's the mayor on the right with the giant head. Also, it's Maribel's dad. So if Maribel seems a little big-headed throughout this run, that's where she gets it. Okay, now we're gonna go into Maribel's enormous house. Ah! Steal this hairband. Talk to her, why not? Uh, need to flip the camera around because this cutscene will do it for me. Oops. If it's not already in the right place. And then of course it just rotates it again, so there's no reason why it rotates it there. You don't have to talk to Maribel. Okay, cool. Thanks, notes. <laughs> I talked to her in all of my D-Rust runs and just kind of assumed that my notes said to do it. I don't know. <laughs> all right. It's fine. Maybe I talked to her on purpose. Maribel has joined the party. That is going to be the first of many, many party join jingles that we are going to hear throughout this run. I'm going to swap Hero's Clothes with Maribel's there just because it is faster than uh, uh, unequipping them. And we're going to want a death warp in about 40 minutes. <laughs> it sounds sillier when you say it out loud. Maribel's going to talk to us in front of the church here. What's wrong, hero? You've been strangely quiet. I'm a Dragon Quest protagonist, Maribel. All I can say is yes and no. Oop, that stairs. You will quickly realize that I am not good at rotating the camera. If you watch the Japanese record for this run, it is insane how much camera work Keta does. Uh, his time is like 40 minutes better than the second place Dragon Quest VII runner. And, you know, there's actually competition on the Japanese board. There are 41 times on the Japanese board for this game. <laughs> Speedrun.com only has three. I'm only aware of four people total who have run this in English. But the Japanese board has as many people on it for this game as we have on the most popular... Uh, English board, which is Dragon Warrior 1. We have, I believe, 42 people on the Dragon Warrior 1 board. 
41 people on the Japanese Dragon Quest 7 port. DQRT is a little popular in Japan if you weren't aware. Is there any other category than any percent? Not really. Um, and the only real bug that I use in this game that would be banned in like a no major glitches run is gonna be when I get to Probina, which is like the 12th or 13th island uh, in like 10 hours. <laughs> um, so there's not really much reason to split the category at all. The Japanese runs do ban that, uh, but it saves like seven minutes, and you know, we're, we in the West are a little more glitch friendly, so it's like, well, you know, it gives Probina something unique about it, so we do it. <laughs> Not much reason, though, to have two categories when the separation is just seven minutes. Oops. Uh, I'll give a lore update after I read this letter. So yeah, we were called off to the castle, as you often are in the beginning of a Dragon Quest game, to go talk to the king. Um, if you've played a bunch of Dragon Quest games before, you might be expecting the king to tell you to go save the world. Uh, but there really isn't much world to save, you know? It's, again, just one island in the middle of the ocean. Nothing else around us, even on all our fishing trips. We haven't found more islands out there let alone larger continents. But it turns out the king's just asking us where his son went because we hang out with him all the time. It's Prince Kiefer here. Um, and we know where he's at. He's off in the Forbidden Zone, in the ruins here, screwing around. We've been exploring it lately. Um, there's the stone plate off the screen to the top right that we'll see in a second. Right there, that's where that FMV was, where we were climbing out. So, yeah, we've been crawling around the ruins, trying to get inside the main doors, but we haven't had any luck yet. Kiefer there had an idea. He had a ring that used to belong to his deceased mother. And that's part of why the king was looking for him, because he knew the prince ran off with the ring. He wanted it back. It's all he has left of his wife. Why did Kiefer run off with it? Feel is that the king's gonna be mad, etc. Kiefer doesn't even understand that. He's just like, eh, it's just a ring. I'll bring it back. Those two need to have a discussion, but instead they communicate through me, the hero who can't speak. So, that's the kind of relationship they've got. Um, so yeah, the, the, Prince, like I said, he would put the ring on that statue to see if it would do anything, because he saw a picture in the royal library of somebody doing that. Um, but he can't read what the, you know, the picture says, so he figured, eh, let's put the ring on there. And I found this thing called a pearl orb in that well. I'm gonna put it here. This is kind of a pointless waste of time. If the developers were looking for ways they could streamline the opening, they could have removed the pearl orb. I don't know if you keep the pearl orb and it turns into something else later, or if it just disappears from your inventory. I, I have no idea. As far as I know, it's just a waste of time. <laughs> but anyway, the next plot trigger is to go through here. There's this wise old man sitting off on this, living off on this cliffside that you have to get through by going through this tunnel. <clears throat> he has a dog. Talk to him here. And I'm gonna give him the, uh, the book or scroll or whatever that the prince found, and it's gonna turn out that he can read it. So he's going to translate it for us, and we're going to go get the prince. Bring him back here. There. Oops, 
Prince is now in the castle. So he's up in his room here, trying to come up with more ideas. Talk to me. That was my fault. I had the wrong turbo speed on. This game is really obnoxious with regards to uh, using a turbo controller. Because if your turbo controller is too fast, the game will get hung up and it'll basically drop inputs. Um, particularly when you're not in dialogue. When you're in dialogue, you can match as fast as you want, but in battle or just walking around trying to interact with things, if I have my controller set to the faster speed, you'll see me walk up and just nothing will happen even though I'm holding the interact button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Preferred version of several 7 for a casual play? I'd say whichever one you can get your hands on. With the 3DS eShop closing, uh, you probably don't want to buy a DS cart. I think the PlayStation version is cheaper now. I haven't looked up the prices of 7 and 8 3DS recently, but I'm pretty sure they were expensive. Both versions are good, though. There are differences. Um... But, I don't know, they kind of even out. I like this version a little better. I would say a big determining factor would be whether or not you like the modern Dragon Quest localizations. Um, this game has a very different translation localization versus any of the other games in the series because it's so long and... Ah, uh, there's sirens, I'm gonna... Okay, they're gone. Uh... You know, it's so long, and Squeenix wasn't sure if this game would even sell, so they really didn't have a proper budget for translating it. And you can kind of tell that at the beginning here, it's a pretty good localization. Uh, everybody kind of has their own personality. Uh, there's some depth to the text. They, they use a lot of big words. But when I get, like, four or five islands in, that's all going to go away, and everybody's going to be... I'm not going to say machine translated, but... Uh, it's a, it's a lot stripped down. <laughs> it really feels like they got like a quarter of the way through the game, not necessarily starting at the beginning, and then realized, okay, we don't have the budget to keep doing this. But also the new localizations are... Uh... I'm not going to say objectively horrible, but I do not like them. Unriddled localizations. If you're a fan of just terrible, terrible wordplay, and by terrible I mean lazy, not cheesy, uh, you'll like the 3DS version. But besides the localization, I think it all balances out. Uh, the DS version has uh, 3D models for all the characters, all the environments are 3D. Um, whereas there's some things in this version that are still sprites. But, uh, the game also doesn't perform very well. It's very laggy. Um, 3DS version, you see monsters on the map. Uh, which is the case in other modern games like 3DS 8, DQ11. Where, instead of just completely random encounters, you have to bump into a monster to get into a fight. That may sound appealing, but the dungeons in the 3DS 7 are just copied from this game. They were not designed for that, so there are a lot of rooms where you just cannot get past the monsters. Uh, they're just physically in your way, and you end up fighting more monsters, not fewer, even though you would think that you could avoid them since you can see them. <laughs> That's something that DQ9 is actually pretty bad about too, even though DQ9 was designed for that system. But, yeah, I would say just overall I'm more of a fan of this version, but it's not a very strong preference. They also changed a lot of things under the hood that you wouldn't notice in a first playthrough. If you were looking for a second playthrough, I think it's worth playing the version you haven't played before, just so you can get 
the differences in uh, how the class systems work and some other things. Ah. Okay. Yeah, lore update. We made it into the ruins. Um, the old man just told us that if the chosen one is there, then you just believe hard enough, the door will open. And the prince is like, <laughs> chosen one, huh? I got chosen one written all over me. Let's go do it, hero. Fortunately, the hero, who is actually the chosen one, was with him, and the hero believed hard enough the door opened. And the prince is going to keep believing that he is the chosen one for a while. We're just going to let him. Um, we'll find out the truth in like, I don't know, 10 or 15 hours. Oh, we got it. We got the one cycle. Oh, yeah. As long as that jail door doesn't touch the ground, you can run under it. You gotta be real fast and not mess up pushing those tables to make it, uh, without having to go around and do another loop. So yeah, we're running through the ruin here. Uh, this is gonna take about five more minutes. To go through all these puzzles. This one, you see those pictures of those trees. You go the direction that there's a leaf on it. So we're going to go left, right, left, left. But, uh, you know, talking about random encounters, you actually see that with a lot of remakes. The issue where the dungeons are not designed for the new encounter versions. Uh, if you look at the remakes of DQ3 or DQ4, uh, Super Famicom and PS1, respectively, <clears throat> You'll see that when they change the encounter system to be based on steps instead of completely random, and just in general you have fewer encounters, but if you use the Thief or Taloon's pad foot ability, and you know where you're going in the dungeon, you can get through a lot of dungeons with almost zero encounters. It just kind of breaks it, but I don't know, it's good for a speedrun, I guess. The first time throw... That orb is really hard to throw on that pedestal. <clears throat> There's a couple times in this game where you have to throw a 2D object onto a 3D pedestal, and it's just clunky. It'll look like you're lined up, but it'll just go over, or not make it, or it'll clip through. Yep. Grab this raft, move it over there, that's just saving a couple frames. <clears throat> This room is a color puzzle. <clears throat> Shoutouts to me in colorblind. It's fine, I know the answer. Oh, I could have pushed this one more. My bad. It's this side. Where I am forced to push it after I get it up against the wall. Just differences in how the collision works versus the stone on the ground. That flame would have hit this if I pushed it all the way to the left. <laughs> Never seen an estimate this high for anything. I believe Really Really Longathon is going on right now. One of their events. I'm sure they've got something with an estimate this long. If not, maybe I should have submitted it. My problem submitting this game to events, though, is that I... Just in my adulthood, I am not able to just, you know, adjust my sleep schedule to where I can run this game at not 8 in the morning. <laughs> if the run didn't start between like 8 and 11, then just count me out. But I have been making the schedule for this event so I can make it work. <laughs> Funny how that happened. No 100% category. There isn't a 100% category. The Japanese leaderboard, though, has a category for uh, Four Spirits RTA. I think this is right. And Kiefer's. Kiefer doesn't have one. Oh, did I not get something? Alright, hold up. Yeah, I 
actually need to look at my notes now because I'm an item short. Yep, sword. <laughs> right, hero has it. Then armor. That's what I figured. No, don't take it. I wish I could take that and equip it. Um, but yeah, Four Spirits RTA is basically beating the boss of the second bonus dungeon. It's like three hours longer than uh, any percent. Yeah. Uh, and most of it is grinding, so. I haven't tried doing it on English because English is long enough. But I know you effectively grind to master the Platinum King monster class, which takes like 300 battles. So that you can survive to defeat God in like 19 turns. I think you have to. And you know, from his name, you can probably imagine God is pretty powerful. I could not beat God with my uh, casual 3DS team, which was all monster classes. I didn't have the Platinum King though. I just had a couple of people with multi-heal and it could not keep up with his damage. Okay, I'm gonna throw these in here. I get quite a few very short breaks in this run. Um, since we use turbo controllers now, anywhere that there's a conversation that lasts for more than like two minutes, I can stand up and do whatever I need to do. Get water or whatever. Okay, so lore update here. Uh, we made it through the ruin. We found these rocks and all these pedestals. We put two of them, two of the rocks into one of the pedestals and nothing happened. But it looks like if we had one more, it would complete a picture. Maybe that'll do something. So we're gonna head back home. And uh, it turned out there was a portal in there that took us to the, what Kiefer says is the cave we used to explore. It's the cave that we were in in that opening FMV. So here we are up here again. Fish Festival song. We go down to the dock and we talk to this fish guy and he tells us dad's got a rock. Yeah, this guy tells you, uh, we were fishing, found something weird. And yeah, their big giant fishing trip that they set off fireworks for, it it only took a day. They're already back. We talked to Dad. He's chilling. He's having a fish sub. We ask him if he found anything unusual once he's done rambling about fish. And he gives me the shard. Dad tells us, hey, why don't you go tell the king we're back? I'm like, do it yourself. No. I'm going straight to the ruin. Right here at the uh, 28 minute mark, you're probably starting to realize that I haven't fought anything yet in this Dragon Quest RPG. <laughs> yeah. We're almost there. Don't worry. It is not unusual in your first time playing Dragon Quest VII for it to take two or three hours for you to get to the first fight. There simply aren't any monsters in the world we live in. But in a moment, we're going to go to a world where uh, there are monsters. Maribel's screaming right now because nobody's listening to her. Keeper joins the party. Party join jingle number two.
Party join jingle number three. If I had to estimate how many party join jingles there are in this run, I'd estimate... 70? There's a lot. Maybe more like 30 to 40, but there's a lot. A lot of people join your team and just don't do anything. These are all actual party members, though. Kiefer will be hanging out with us for a while. Spoiler, Maribel for most of the run. Maribel made good on her thread at the beginning of the game of figuring out where we run off to. Alright. What's gonna happen? Bright light, portal animation. And where are we now? Oh yeah, for a casual first playthrough of this, I would estimate like a hundred hours to finish it. Especially if you get caught up in grinding. There's a lot of grinding that you can do in this game. We'll talk about it more later, but once you unlock uh, character classes in this game, those classes progress by winning battles, not by gaining experience points. So you can get lost just grinding a lot of really weak enemies to level up your classes and spend hours and hours doing that. Oh, what are these things? Their methodic jiggling is making me queasy. <laughs> Oops, that didn't change my battle speed. Tactical slept in, didn't remind me. Lucky panel is pretty addicting in this game. We'll actually see some lucky panel later. But I will be cheating at it, so... I actually know if RNG manipulations are banned in the Japanese categories, especially since they recently, recently, within the last like two years, started allowing them in Dragon Quest IV PS1. The RNG manipulation that I do for Lucky Panel doesn't really help though, it helps a little bit but it's very debatable as to whether it even saves me the time that I spend on it. But it's cool to do and show off, so that's the main reason I do it. I'm gonna sit through an 18 hour run and not show anything cool. I'm Brock on the right. There's a movable version of that later. Pretty sure that's the same rock that's in the world's tallest tower. Maybe not. Oh, we've actually got story again. Um, this is Matilda. Um, yeah, Matilda's here. She's complaining that her friends are dead uh, and that there are no flowers. Maribel just happens to have some flower seeds on her, though. Now, Matilda's joining the party. Um, she's our fourth party member. She's incredibly strong. Uh, she'll be carrying us uh, until she leaves the party. Pretty much. So, yeah, we're gonna be adventuring with her for quite a while. Oops, accidentally did that. Uh, she's gonna be your, uh, and she's gone. Okay. Uh, never to return. But we'll cherish the times that we had. Anyway, we're gonna go up here. 
this house. This is Hank's house. Hank is currently in the witness protection program, as this person will immediately tell me. Oh damn it, how can I say something like that to a stranger? Whoopsies. Uh, we're gonna buy a club for Kiefer because you don't start off with any weapons in this game. And that's what we can afford. All those memories we had with Matilda. You remember that time I accidentally re-entered the hill and then had to leave it again? That's it. That's the only memory. Not a very good one. So this is Hank, like I mentioned. He's uh, wounded by monsters right now. And to try to hide him from the monsters, he has swapped houses with that merchant. Uh, the merchant really shouldn't be telling people that. But he does. Please forgive me, my father struggles to hang on to life as we speak. He was mortally wounded attempting to save the women from the monster's invasion. Like I said, the beginning of this game, they actually do use a lot of big words. Little Patrick here apparently read a thesaurus. Uh... That didn't last throughout the entire... game, but... Right now, they're trying a little harder on the localization. Just kind of funny the dialogue that Patrick ended up with because he's this tiny child using all these big words. Uh, eight points, yeah, I'll find eight points. I need four XP before the next boss, and this fight will give me four XP, so that'll take care of that right away. Um, so yeah, to help Patrick's father, Hank. We need to go into the mine here and retrieve a green color stone. We'll see what color stones are in a minute. We find Matilda here as well. She's like, hey, help us out. And she's like, eh. What, you, what could she be up to, though? There's not very much on this island. It's pretty much a town, the mine, and a tower full of monsters. According to Kiefer, it seems that a viscous mass of depravity exists where Matilda's heart used to be. You don't get viscous mass of depravity later on in the game. Yeah, I got my 4 XP, so we're not going to fight anything else. The amount of XP that you need here is a little dependent on that first fight with the three slimes. One of them ran away from me, so I actually needed four instead of three, but you could need as many as six if they all run away from you. It's fine if I get beat up here. That death warp I was talking about that I was preparing for 30 minutes ago, <laughs> that's happening at the bottom of the mine. Perfect time to do it. I don't have any money on me to lose, and I get a free revival. Wait, very soon. I didn't need to do that. These are color stones. Essentially just red, blue, and yellow. As a colorblind person, I don't really mind this particular puzzle. I should say partially colorblind. I don't, I don't see black and white, but I have trouble telling specific colors apart, and the yellows and green that video games like to use in color puzzles often look exactly the same to me. Though the green in the color stones is actually a good green. It's a little darker than Hero's outfit. Uh, I thought we might see it there, but we didn't. Fail to run to this at least once because we need some damage on us. And these guys. No. I wish they did a little more. That's fine. Here's the green color stone. Alright, I'm a second ahead of PB.
get excited. I've ba I'm basically I'm I'm basically going to PB. You can tell the next runner that they, he needs to be here early. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong from this point onward. And Matilda shows up just to hit the thing with her sword and give us a piece of it. Thanks. It also gives me a wood doll, which really isn't important. Uh, I'm gonna unequip Kiefer because he still has a ton of HP. And we will die. That's not what I should have done, too. Yeah, nice critical hit, Kiefer. Let's, okay. Let's death warp properly. And manual. Let's make sure I'm not accidentally using an herb. If I use useless items, it's the fastest way to death warp, because I won't take half damage like I would if I parry. Now these guys would hit Kiefer harder than that. That's a four. Good. And Kiefer's slow, so I can just hold fight for this one, and they'll go first. All right. So we want to equip everyone. This is gonna put on all the armor I removed, as well as a hat that Hero picked up. Life acorn on Hero. I think I need Kiefer to be alive to use this strength seed. Let's try it. Nice. Okay. And like I said, this cutscene coming up is gonna automatically revive everyone. Any cutscene that involve that where the characters talk to each other is probably gonna automatically revive you. And <laughs> with the piece of cloth, we're just waving it around like a flag. I don't know. Egging them on, come on, kill me faster, I wanna go back to town. Like a bullfight. Alright. Yeah, we give the shard of the green killer stone to Patrick. He did something with it. I don't know. I think Patrick's a medical professional. Um, and yeah, his dad's gonna recover. Here's where we get our free revive for this cutscene here where Maribel talks to you. Trying to sleep here, and Maribel's just trying to hit on me. Hero, what if we don't make it back home? Are there aren't there any girls there that you would miss? Maribel, you're the only girl my age in existence. Uh, I know that you're talking about yourself. And no, the answer is no. We're gonna get hit on by a queen later, Maribel. What can you offer me? Anyway. <laughs> Alright. After desperately clutching to life, he has managed to conquer death itself. This kid's like eight years old. Yeah, we talked to Hank here, we explained to him what's going on. I didn't properly explain this, but there's monsters in this area that have been kidnapping all the women from the village. Pretty common Dragon Quest subplot. Going back to Dragon Quest 3. Recycled as recently as Dragon Quest not, uh, 11. EQ4 used it. This is the only one where they're just, like, nebulously kidnapped, though. Usually they're being sacrificed to a monster like the Orochi or the Chameleon Humanoid or... whatever they called him in TQ11. Really? 
I always get a fight on this walk, and it looked very briefly like it wasn't gonna happen. But it did. <laughs> a quarter of a step away. Alright. Let's go fight Golem. This is Golem. Uh... Hey, SK, thanks for the good luck. Alright, we're gonna parry a lot against Golem and hope that Hank does the job for us. You see, if Hank attacks, he does close to 30 damage. Uh, I'm gonna have Kiefer Manual and we're just gonna be safe today. You went first. Okay. I'm Maribel, thank you. Heading key for blaze. There's a lot of other things Kiefer can do. Kiefer can throw herbs at me, which is fine. Uh, he can cast sap. Did I say Kiefer? I meant Hank. I'm talking about Hank if I said Kiefer. Um, yeah, you can throw herbs. I think he can just do nothing if he feels like it. You can cast sap, which is kind of a waste of time. Yeah, King is just watching right now. Great. He's been doing a lot of attacking, though. This fight should be about over. Now he cast heal. Fine, and saved my herb. Oh, don't cast tap. I didn't ask for a demonstration of everything you can do. He's gotta be close, I'm just gonna parry and stop healing aggressively. There we go. There's boss down. Yeah, that was a plot very early on in Dragon Ball 2, wasn't it? Like in the first arc. <laughs> That's also true. Maybe Hank is still recovering. He seemed well enough to throw his kid up in the air, but you know, you gotta look strong in front of your kid. Okay, Windshard was found. We're gonna pick up a lot of shards. All the shards we pick up are for those pedestals we saw earlier. When we get enough of them, we can go to a new world. Hmm. That wood shard isn't even for the next world. The next world we go to will be a fire shards. Oops. Grab this leather shield. If I have good movement through this tower, I shouldn't find very many encounters, but as I'm saying, if I have good movement through here, you see me sliding my face against the wall for no reason. <laughs> Having good camera movement makes uh, moving the character much more difficult. Man. Not surprised I get a fight here. This was kind of a long walk to get to the next staircase. Bad movement isn't even the reason. I should also mention that Golem, I don't think, ever hit Hank, but the monsters can hit Hank. <laughs> Maybe once. I think there was one turn where it confused me that nobody took damage. He probably hit Hank at that point. Please don't kick me out of here. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna use my heals. Oh yeah, I also didn't mention, Golem put everybody at level 3. That's why I needed that experience I mentioned earlier. You need at least uh, 6 XP total when you get to that fight for everybody to hit level 3. And that gives us uh, the heal spell, which also refills Hero's Magic. 
you didn't have any magic previously, but anytime you learn a spell while leveling up, you get a magic refill for some reason. I went the wrong way, didn't I? Yep, I get a fight for it. My bad. And they don't want to run. Hope I do not run out of herbs on the other boss. Uh-oh. We might be leaving. Oh, they're out of magic. Nope, nope, that one wasn't. <laughs> okay, we'll go heal. I just jump off of here? Good, okay. That helps mitigate the time loss. Get out of my way, slime. Hank, really? I guess he knew Kiefer had that one. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go here and we're gonna revive. The priest is gonna say extra stuff because I got Hank with me. Revival fees on the Dragon Quest series, pretty consistently, once you start, you get to at least Dragon Warrior 3, are uh, roughly the character's level squared, rounded up to the nearest multiple of 10. So 10 gold will be the revival cost until we get to level 4. I kind of want to buy some more uh, herbs, too, since I'm here. You're not... You... Weird. Okay. Uh... Oh, you have to buy them one at a time, right? That's why you buy them at the very start of the game. I just want three. So item shops in this game, if it's flagged as an item shop, you can buy up to nine items at a time. Uh, no matter what the item is. But if it's flagged as a weapon and armor shop, then even if they sell herbs, you can only buy one at a time. Eggplants. I should have bought the eggplants. that door? Hmm. I bet I could have. I bet if I kept going I could have opened that door as a shortcut. Oh well. I've never had to do it before. <laughs> it's also easy to lose track of where I am in this tower because you go up and down and up and down and up and down. We're going up. Three times in a row. Four times in a row. And then down. And up again. Up. Then this is the way I meant to go. How oh, weird, this is not how my camera is usually rotated. I haven't really practiced uh, camera movement, just like know where to go so I rotate the camera kind of on the fly. We'll heal Maribel. Uh, I'm supposed to have changed some equipment around. This goes to Maribel. That goes to Kiefer. Alright.
crab. So, Maribel has the blaze skill. She can contribute damage to this fight. She can also attack if Hank casts Sap twice, but I would still prefer that Hank not cast Sap twice. Okay, Kiefer's in the danger zone, I need him to parry. Uh, actually, no, no. Hero takes care of that. Hey, Media, thanks for the good luck. Charge. Uh. Okay, good. Parallel. So, this crab can do two things to prolong this fight. It can use. I don't know what the ability is called in this game, probably Strong D. Um, oops. I should heal her. Uh, which reduces all damage he takes for that turn by 90%. Uh, and he can also cast the heal spell. And he can cast the heal spell many, many times. He has 50 MP and heal costs 2. Fortunately, he does not use it all of them. You usually see about 2 or 3 heals per fight, which gives him another 30 to 40 HP. There, where it says he's ready to defend the attack or whatever it said. Strong at D. I think I would really prefer if he would do something. Not on the turn he's parrying. having to leave, but that's not a big deal in an 18 hour run. If that's the only thing that goes wrong, I'll PB by a lot. <laughs> so yeah, this is... We're in here trying to defeat the boss of the monsters. This guy's not the boss though, he says, oh, if our boss were here... Oh, boss! Turns out Matilda is the boss of the monsters. Matilda doesn't like crabs though, so she kills him. Um, then transforms into this lich looking monster. find out here that Matilda is the sister of the guy they named the town after. I don't know if there was much to Rex's story as far as what he saved the village from. I don't know. But then she got angry enough she turned into a monster. That happens sometimes in Dragon Quest. And now we gotta fight Matilda, except I'm not gonna fight Matilda, I'm gonna run away. You can beat her to death, she just stands there and takes it. But running away is faster. And then Hank tries to walk up slowly and finish her off. If you talk to him, you can stop him. It's a little faster than letting him kill her. But either way, she'll die here. And she'll thank stupid Maribel for giving her the stupid flower seeds. Like Maribel really did anything.
And then for the first time, the sun comes out over this island. That'll be a recurring theme. Once we defeat whatever evil is going on in these islands we warp to, the sun will come out. Some of the islands do have a night and day, but it's just that the sky is dark. There's dark clouds all over all these islands. They're sealed away. Minor spoiler for like five minutes from now, but... When we get back to the present, it's going to turn out that this island has appeared in the present. There are now two islands in the world. And that's going to be our gameplay loop. Uh, find shards. Get warps, warped into an island, and then uh, solve the problem, and then the island appears in the present. We are in fact in the past right now. I don't know when that's really established, but you pretty much figure it out going to Rexwood in the present. Alright, where's the door? Patrick. If you talk to Patrick, you can give him the wood doll that Matilda gave us a while ago. But I don't like Patrick, so I'm not going to give Patrick the wood doll. He's got his thesaurus. He's fine. That's my water. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, I'll find it. What do I have against Patrick? His vocabulary, mainly. Let's see. <laughs> now we're in, you made it to the start of the tutorial, yep. We just, uh, we're almost through the first cycle of the gameplay loop. Yeah, for whatever reason, the first island you go into, you can't warp home until you solve it. But going forward, we'll be able to leave whenever we want. Not that way. Not yet. Uh, I'm gonna forget to go that way. Next time I walk through here, if I don't turn right there, somebody say something. Or, uh, ten hours from now, <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. I'll probably remember. Maybe. I'm not aware of any speedruns uh, where any other speedruns where making a mistake can cause a problem ten hours later. And you don't realize it until ten hours later. But that's one. Wait, no, we talked to Mom. The rainbow dew that you need for coastal. Oh, I was supposed to lie to her. I don't know. There's a lot of dialogue in this game with yes and no prompts where it's it matters if you say yes or no from a speedrun perspective. Just it saves a second or two picking the other option. I think this is something else that you can not get and then uh, it causes problems later, but it much more recent or much sooner. You need this holy water in like 30 minutes. water item has a kind of strange evolution to it. Yep, 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 you're not Kiefer. Okay. Ugh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, we got the holy water. Uh, in a while, we're gonna dump it out, and then we'll have an empty bottle. And in the empty bottle, we'll put the rainbow dew, which we use in coastal, which is the last of the 18 islands. And then, um, where do we go? I go to the boat, yeah. And then I think you use the bottle again later for the pilot fire in disc two. Not nearly as useful as a Zelda bottle. Can't put fairies in it. Alright, here's Kiefer and unfortunately Maribel. Maribel thinks she'll help. Cute. I don't think you're supposed to be able to get back there without lifting up those pots, but if you wiggle just right, you can. It's probably faster to pick up the pot on the top left corner, but I like wiggling past it. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple copies of this game. When I was learning this game three years ago, I, uh... Two years ago? I don't know. I guess two and change. I was having a lot of issues with my PS2. It kept eating my discs. I changed the disc sen the sensor, or laser, that's the word, in the PS2. Then this ribbon cable popped up and scratched some of my discs. So I bought a couple extra. Disc 1 of Dragon Quest 7. Eventually, just stopped using that console. I gave up on trying to fix it. So, yeah, we got a boat here. This is just this little boat that Hero and Kiefer have been restoring. Fortunately, they just finished it uh, the year that we need it, you know? Copper sword for Kiefer. Go to this house here. And this lady has a shard. Check it out. She says, oh, you like that rock? My husband gave it to me, but it's dumb. Uh, just like my husband, it's taking up space. You want it? I say yes. And she says, Okay, take it. It's as worthless to me as my husband. They're, uh, they're not getting along. So, she also says, If you want more, you can probably ask him where he found it. And he says, What? My wife sent you? Oh, she gave you the rock? Aw, oh, jeez. Yeah. He knows he's in trouble. And uh, he tells us there's more stones like that in the color stone mine. Also, the tower is gone for some reason. Maybe that was a load-bearing crab. monsters in here in the present or not. I think there are on the bottom floors, maybe not right here. Got some stuff I need to do here. All of the defense seeds I pick up in this run are going to go on Maribel because she's just going to be a meat shield for a lot of the run. Particularly disc two. And the Dharma segment. Uh, I need this.
Puzzles are a little more complicated in the present mine versus the past mine. The past mine was kind of the uh, kind of the tutorial. Thanks for the good luck. Mm. All right. Now there's a staircase in here to another floor. They dug a little deeper. There's another sign that we are in the or rather that we were in the past of this world. I should probably have fought that. I've been realizing that lately, that I should probably fight if I get an encounter in here, because we're about to grind uh, in the next world we go to. So why not grind here? <laughs> and cat mages are worth the most XP of anything in this mine. That would have been a really good fight to take. Okay. Yeah, we don't want a death warp today. I'm not sure where it takes you if you death warp, but you don't get a free revival. So we don't want that. is doing the run after this or from his perspective he's doing a run tomorrow <laughs> all right we're out of here uh. now there's definitely a lot of little subplots and Plus triggers that just feel like a big waste of time and maybe they could have made this game 10 hours shorter. This is one of them that always bugs me when I have to do it in a speedrun. Whole thing with, ah, oh, the prince, ah, oh, you ran away. Yeah. I'm sorry, lower the drawbridge. Okay. I'm gonna go talk to a couple of people in here. Nobody important, just that old man from earlier and his old man friend who lives in the castle. Don't know what he does. I don't know what either of these two old men do for a living. They're probably pensioned, though. I don't know. This is the old man that lives on the cliff. I don't know how you're supposed to know to talk to this guy. I think you're just in exploration mode. <clears throat> Which is fair, I think, in some RPGs. Not later in this game for sure, but at this point in the game I can kind of understand if you're just supposed to explore everything in the castle. There's stuff going on here. The adults are talking about how there's an island now, and uh, you're probably supposed to come here before you run off to Rexwood, but it doesn't really matter. Still plays out about the same. Courage to play 18 hours straight. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I hate this conversation. This conversation is uh, translated poorly, I think, in my opinion. Japanese dialogue does this thing a lot where they say that thing or that person and they, they translated that literally in that conversation and it's just irritating why don't you go find it and bring it back like what are you talking about just tell me what it is tell me what I'm looking for man I don't know maybe people playing in Japanese have the same reaction
I found it, so now I'm pretty much walking back to the ruin. Fortunately, uh, after the next island we do, we're gonna have the return spell, so we're not gonna have to walk to the ruin anymore, but... And now we do. Did I? No, it's on the other side. Yeah, who knows? I don't know when uh, you know, the DQ3 remake's gonna come out. I'm pretty surprised that it isn't already out, based on how much they showed of it two years ago, but I don't know. I'm also not really looking forward to it. Maybe it'll be fun to play casually, but I can you can just tell it's not gonna be as good of a speedrun as the Super Famicom version. It won't be as fast. No. And I doubt they'll change the game enough mechanically for it to be interesting as a speedrun. And I've played DQ3 casually so many times that I I really don't need a another fun version to play casually. <laughs> DQ3 could really benefit from a complete rebalance. Make the merchant class worth using, but they're not going to do it. DQ3 is too popular, they're not going to mess with the formula. Hopefully <laughs> they end monster medals. If you love SFC DQ3 speedruns, then man you're going to love Game Boy Color. It's very similar, except you can randomly lose 5 seconds after every battle because of monster medals. Woohoo! Alright. And go. Alright, I'm gonna find my water during this cutscene. Anyone know? Does this cutscene, does this happen in 3DS? Or anything similar when you enter Ingao? Because that's really cool, and I wish they did that more in this game. Uh, but basically, <clears throat> that was showing us what happens in this island. The bad thing that happens to prevent the island from showing up in the present. The volcano's gonna erupt. But it's actually canon that the characters saw that one, so maybe that's why it doesn't happen later. For whatever reason, the characters get a vision of the eruption. No, out of MP? Okay. Like I said, we're going to do a lot of grinding in this island, um, but it's going to be spread out. So, there's a couple of times in the beginning here where we need to... I could die to this. Need to use the in to progress the plot. So, in between in forced in usages, we're going to... Yeah, okay, we might need to run. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. We're going to... I'm not feeling good. Okay, we're running. <laughs> Everything is fine. The other one's not gonna attack, it attacked. Okay, that's fine. I made a mistake. Uh, yeah, in between forced end usages, we're gonna come out here and fight more stuff. Sword of Rue is very dangerous at level 4, it turns out. 
I thought Maribel might go first because she's the fastest character, but then she didn't. Thanks, Maribel. Oh, whatever. You're not gonna kill my hero. He's the hero. How can you kill the hero? Oh, with Blaze. That's how. Oh. Really? Fortunately, I only had like three gold in my pocket that time, so I only lost like one gold. Time. Okay, I probably have to pay for revival, but I'm gonna put it off until I'm sure. <clears throat> so this is the town of Ingao. Um, they're about to put on a festival called the Festival of Faux Flame. Uh, they talk about the God of Flame a lot. We'll meet him in Disc 2. Grab a hat. And we gotta use the inn here. Do I have five gold? Hey, I have five gold. Put that hat. Ah. Rumble, rumble. So Pamela here has had a vision of the volcano erupting during the festival, which is what we saw. Um, Essentially, these guys are all going to grab torches, go up to the volcano, throw some torches into the volcano, and then it erupts. And keep in mind for later that when we saw the volcano erupt in our vision, we saw a lady in a red dress throwing the torch into the volcano. So... We're talking to Pamela. Pamela's trying to warn all the villagers that the volcano's gonna erupt. The mayor's trying to cover it up. He says, oh, don't be silly. It's not gonna erupt. These tremors are not a sign that the volcano's gonna erupt. It's a sign that it's time for the festival. Perfect logic. <laughs> he kind of criticizes her for causing a stink in front of everybody, causing panic. And Pamela says, yeah, but everybody's going to die. Shouldn't we tell them that? No. I feel like I've seen this movie a few times. Character knows something bad's going to happen. Guy just tries to say, don't, don't, don't worry about it. It's not, not going to happen. I do like the Ingal Mayor, though. Okay. That. Pamela says, oh, hey, I saw you in my vision. Come with me. They did his name. I think there's more dialogue there if you have living characters, so we're actually saving time. The other characters won't speak if they're dead. <clears throat> okay, she tells me to use the inn again. Before I do that, I'm supposed to buy a ton of herbs here, but I don't have the money for that. We're going to get some revival money by selling... Not the club. Well, the bronze knife. 
everybody's level four, right? I need to save 40 gold. Oh, I can spend this much on herbs. Since again we have to use the inn uh, to progress the story, we're going to go out here and grind until we run out of magic. And I'm probably going to end up grinding in the volcano too, because I don't think I'm going to get the levels I need off of this since I died so early last time. Usually you want at least like three battles before that first inn usage, but you're weak from the Rexwood fights. so. Doesn't always happen. As we saw, I died to the second one. <laughs> he forgot Fire Slash. Now we're gonna see him use that pretty much every turn. As long as he's with him. It does like 10% more damage than a normal attack, maybe 20%. It's not much, but it's worth watching the animation. I need one more fight before I go in. No Maribel's gonna be useless in it. This is fine. These guys are pretty weak. I think these guys are the lowest damage of all the enemies out here, and the Flora Jays are the lowest durability. But they're also the two monsters that give the least XP. fight after Kiefer gets level 6. Not quite there, but we're close enough for now. There's a full heal thing inside the volcano, uh, so we'll just grind around that for a little bit. Probably like two or three fights. It also means I'm not going to be running from, well, unless I get a scary fight, I'm not going to run from anything in the volcano. I can just fight it instead. I find four imps, I'm gonna run from that. It's the Volcano Festival song. Talk to the uh, uh, elder here. He asks if we're enjoying the Festival Faux Flame. Oops, talk to him twice again. Wonderful. Tells us to keep partying. Instead of partying, we're gonna go talk to Pamela again. He's gonna tell us the plan that the, the volcano is currently closed. We can only go in there during festival time. But we need to investigate what's going on in there. Figure out why it's gonna erupt. I don't know, I'm not a seismologist. The mayor is excited though. He likes that there's uh, tourists here for the festival. He says, oh, 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 these guys don't have any torches yet. Get them some torches. Come on. All right. Let's go. You guys ready? All right, we'll make the announcement. Or I'm going to go to the volcano.
This cutscene here is a little longer than it needs to be, but everybody's putting the torches out. Going up to the volcano. Be a volcanologist? Probably. I don't know. I said I'm not one. I haven't read Patrick's Thesaurus. are... yeah, they do that. <laughs> They're annoying because they blind you, is what I was gonna say. The blindness only lasts a turn or two, and it doesn't tell you when it wears off, which is annoying. for a minute. I'm trying to point out that this is the red dressed woman that we saw in the vision. We can see that she is in the back of the line fortunately, so we've got some time to look around. Dogs didn't growl at random noises from the kitchen. Cool. Um, so yeah, we run up to the front of the line because we're rude. Talk to this horned hat guy. He's excited because for the first time in his life, he is the first person in line for the Festival of Flame. And then the mayor comes out and says, Hey, let the let our guests go ahead of you. So, sucks to be him, I guess. <laughs> and this is pretty much all there is to the festival. You just you throw the torch in. Is like, cool, I'd sure hate to fall in there. In about two minutes, Maribel, we're gonna fall in the volcano, so. Oh, I didn't rotate the camera, whatever. I wonder if Hori regrets the aesthetic at EQ7? I hope not. He might have at the time, because when games started being 3D, games all had to be 3D. But looking back in time, this game looks better than Final Fantasy VII. I will gladly debate that. Final Fantasy VII looks so bad. Lego people and the monsters that don't have textures, they're just solid colors. Eh. This game looks so much better than that. The sprite work in this game is great. But you're comparing, you know, one of the last sprite work games before the 3D era kicked in to one of the first 3D era games, right? Like, you could make a stronger argument in favor of Final Fantasy if you looked at 8 or 9 rather than 7 versus 7. Okay, we'll fight this reluctantly. Should be fine. If we're getting blinded, maybe it won't be fine. Okay, he's still hit. Yeah, because the in eight and nine, the monsters at least have textures on them. They're not just solid like. It's two different rendering modes of the PlayStation, if I understand correctly. 
But the, the monsters in 7, a lot of them just don't look great because they aren't textured. They're just solid colors with some smoothing applied. The character models in battle look okay. And I'm not entirely against the Lego people outside of battle. But not a fan of 7's enemy looks. What am I doing? Healing here. I need to put that weapon on the right person. It's already on the right person. Cool. Uh, copper sword goes to hero. That club can be sold later. I'm gonna need to use the life acorn. And I'll use it in a second. Also, I don't think this is the first time this has happened, but you can see that every four times that I take a staircase or walk through a screen transition, somebody throws a torch into the volcano. And it is actually cycling through everyone in that uh, line that we walked past. And if you take too long, like if I wipe in here and have to walk through here again, uh, the lady with the red dress might uh, throw her torch in the volcano and then I game over. Not like a complete game over. You wake up in the in and it was all a bad dream. You forget six? Not yet. Okay, so I need at least two more fights. Can I make the stream look so nice? I have spent entirely too much money on my retro console setups, is the short answer. Oops, don't talk to her. Shut up, Maribel. What do you mean a monster you haven't taken on before? We've fought these things at least three times already. Um, yeah, I've got a PlayStation 2 with component cables going into a RetroTink 5X. Not as complicated as my, like, NES setup. Don't kill Maribel. No, they are not hitting Kiefer at all. Okay, thank you. Maribel died, I would have had to leave, and then that would have been obnoxious, because I would have run into the risk of a uh, red dress girl eating everything. And the same fight again. Cool. Please hit Kiefer, not Maribel. You wouldn't know it from that last battle, but monsters are supposed to hit the characters in front more often than the characters in back. I don't know the exact percentages because it changes every single game, but... It's close to like... If, I think if you have four characters on the team that it's exactly 40, 30, 20, 10 percent. I'm not sure about three people. Okay, that's enough. Okay, now we're gonna fight a big ol' head. I don't know if this one that gets triggered when you talk to the guy can cause the eruption. I kinda wanna do that someday. So this enemy is on a fixed rotation. Um, okay. I don't want Maribel to sap him. So the first turn he's going to attack or breathe fire. Second turn he's going to build up power or do an AoE attack. Okay. And then this is going to be a normal attack. Nice crit. Maribel and Perry. Try to keep everyone over 30 HP if I can. Perry if they get under 20. Uh, but he can't do more than 20 damage in a turn unless he's built up power. If he builds up power like that, he can do 30. 
His defense will stay lowered for about four turns, and then I'll have to cast the sap again. Maribel is my fastest character as well. Um, Hero is about the same agility as the boss. Kiefer is slower. But the turn order isn't super reliable. Ah. I want Kiefer to parry this turn. Charge, that's what I wanted. Okay. You have to parry and you have to heal them. You can cast more saps. Oh, that's a good opportunity. Building up power. I'm just gonna parry with both. Oh, he's zapped already. Fine. He should be close to dead. He's only at 300 HP. Yeah, there he is. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a dot candy. dies, the big pot disappears for some reason. I don't know how he got that down here, but now it's gone. And the black stink that was in the pot floated up to the surface. And we gotta climb out of here. Go deal with that. Nothing fancy we need to do, we just need to Use that holy water that we got from our uncle. Whom I didn't really talk about, but... The guy we got the holy water from was our uncle. Volcano is purified. <clears throat> yeah, seeing the sprite of the item, something new for this game. Also, you see Red Dress Girl right at the end there threw her torch in, and the volcano did not erupt. We saved him. <laughs> I really like looking at the NES games for iterative changes, like the way that you open doors in Dragon Warriors 1 through 4 changes in each game. Dr. Pamela for an Aqua Share. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of alcohol references in this game. You can tell we're off of the Nintendo console for now. PlayStation doesn't care. Alright, so the first time you exit town in this after defeating the fire giant, there are no monsters in the overworld. So I need to double back in. Yeah, like I did before there'll be monsters out here. And now I'm going to grind until the hero learns the return spell. It's going to take like 10 minutes. Oh. It's a good point for y'all to stand up, get some water, whatever you need to do. 
Um, yeah, essentially, for now, it's just gonna be Hero Key for attacking, Maribel casting Blaze. When Maribel hits level 7, she will learn the Sleep spell, and then I'll start casting that on a lot of things, and that'll reduce the damage I take considerably. Um, but it takes about a thousand XP to get Hero to level 8 for return. And these guys are only giving me like 30 XP per fight. Yeah, Eleven is the only game in the series that has anything like the Draconian options. I'm kind of fine with. I like the one that uh, made monsters more difficult, but everything else is just kind of silly. Shy Pox. I don't think I could respect a person more for them having completed the game with the Shy Pox thing active. Oops. Because it doesn't really make the game harder, it just adds more RNG to it. You just reset until you don't lose turns. Playing without armor is just kind of boring, it just takes your options away. But I'm pretty sure some of the bosses have like more moves if you put on harder monsters, so that one's a cool option. Gives the game more replay value. Eh, kill her. Yeah. Hating on this garbage fight. <laughs> Maribel does get her magic refilled when she hits level 7, but it's very unusual for it to happen at a convenient point when I'm doing this grind. More often, it'll be like right after I used the end. And Hero needs his magic refilled anyway, so it's it's not a huge deal. I get it or if I don't. Now oh, we're out of magic. I sold your weapons, so just bury. Kiefer's level. Oh, it's Maribel. Okay, well it happened at a convenient point. Ugh, okay. Um, definitely sleep these two. Okay. Everything out here is 100% susceptible to sleep, so I could just cast it to make an entire group of monsters and not deal any damage to me for a while.
I saw the word super kiefer somewhere recently and I was afraid of what it means. Go get Hero's Magic back. I assume somebody grinded Kiefer to a really high level. Kiefer is eventually going to leave our party, and he's going to do so before Metal Slimes show up, so... Getting him to a high level is not easy. Somebody did that without frame skip on emulator. Even then, uh, PlayStation emulators don't run fast. I'm skeptical about that. PC can barely run this game at 300% speed. PlayStation 1 is too powerful. in this area. They and the foresters are kind of the main threats. I shouldn't really sleep them. Hey Jerry Conger, thanks for the good luck. 660 resilience at level 50, that's bizarre. the last boss you fight with Kiefer? Cavemon? 660 resilience won't even help you against Cavemon. Because he casts Firebane. I would understand if it were like a... Here, can you beat Deja now? Not Deja, uh, Dharma. But you don't take Kiefer to Dharma. He leaves before that. When you need him the most, he abandons you. does take a while, but it pretty quickly makes up for itself. The return spell is very strong. Oh, don't run away from me. I haven't timed how long it takes to walk back to the shrine from various places, but... If I had to walk back there from present in now, it'd probably take two or three minutes. So why not spend a few minutes grinding, you know? <laughs> the next island doesn't have any bosses, but the one after that has a boss that would be pretty tough if we weren't level 8. <clears throat> Oops, ran out of magic. In the same fight that we ran out of magic last time. Sucks if you used a bunch of seeds on Kiefer. At least he gives you his equipment, though.
That might be the last time I have to use the N during this grind. Or it might take one more. Let's see Kiefer's eight. <coughs> when Maribel hits eight, that means I need about 250 more XP. I actually don't spend that much time grinding considering the length of the run. You know, this grind that's like 10 or 15 minutes long. Uh, the Dharma grind, post Dharma, is like 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, that one's pretty bad. Then uh, there's another one right after we get Ira. I don't know exactly how long that one is. I want to ballpark like 30 minutes. And then we kill some king medals at the very end. Uh, which is only like 5 minutes, I don't know. Depends on your luck. But, you know, 18 hour speedrun. We're only gonna spend like, like an hour and a half to two hours grinding. That's not that bad for an RPG. MVP party member? Maybe Gabo? Gabo is going to be our healer because he's got really high agility. It's really his only qualification, but it's important. <laughs> uh, yeah, sleep the other two. <clears throat> I feel like my voice is going out, and that's not good. I have to keep talking for another bit, you know? Essentially our party rolls, like, uh, for like the end game, is we're gonna have, uh, Hiro and Ira are kind of just gonna be sword dance robots. Melvin is kind of filling in. He'll sometimes heal, sometimes stun, sometimes use Guardian. And Gabo will be the healer. <laughs> also, my brother just woke up, so I maybe push to talking a little bit um, until he goes to work in a bit. Oops. It's a little early for him, though. He might disappear in his room for a while. talking about the estimate, yeah, the estimate I gave is pretty typical for DQ7. I think the last two events I actually estimated 19 hours. I just <clears throat> forgot that uh, it was 19, not 18, so I'm gonna have to be an hour faster this year. <laughs> but it's fine. My last run I did, I PB'd by 20 minutes, so... I did um, end up using the end one more time. Marvel's 8, Marvel's 8, okay. I'm gonna check exactly where I'm at real quick. 1200? Okay, I need 150 more XP. There's like 5 or 6 more fights maybe, depending on what I get. Maybe a little more. What was my PV? It was... I defeated Orgo Demir a little under 17, or yeah, a little under 17 hours. But then the end of the game, if I play through all the ending and credits, that's another like 20 minutes on top.
which I will if uh, the run ends early enough. I'm pretty optimistic about it though. This whole game feels a lot more stable to me now that I'm running it than it did when I was just watching other people do it. I feel like I've come up with some safe strats, especially for the earlier bosses. Uh, versus what High Spirits was doing like eight years ago. sleep here. Yeah, they blinded the whole team. So sleep would have been the right choice. DQ8 was the first game that had like the punnier monster names and the onomatopoeic spell names that we're used to these days. DQ8 introduced it and then the DS re-releases ran with it. Fun, good. There it is. Got return. We're out of here. Do not forget the Rainbow Dew. This is the last time they, in the plot that we kind of make a big deal about another island appearing. After this, it's just business as usual. Like Characters don't comment on it. We just go there and check it out. And then I'm not going to forget the Rainbow Dew. Alright, good. Now when we get to Coastal and climb to the top of the lighthouse, I won't have to leave and walk all the way here. And then go back. Rainbow do in 10 hours when I actually use it. That's where it came from. Again, that's the last of the 18 islands is where I need that item I just picked up. actually cannot cast return yet, but as soon as I get back on my boat, I'll be able to. First we have to have the obnoxious JRPG conversation of, you people are children, you can't save the world. You're only 15, hero. Hey, Dad, but in anime terms, I'm like 35, you know? Anime years.
this version or 3DS version, I'd say whichever one's easier for you to get your hands on. They're both good. Kind of talked about this earlier, but they both got, uh, like the 3DS version I think has improvements and I think it has things that aren't as great. Really, I would probably say it should come down to which of the localizations you like more. Do you want this more direct translation or do you want constant lazy puns? Oh, thanks for the 1.5 hours late message speed reminder. I did that first round of the slime fight without changing it because of you. I lost so much time. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't really been reading my notes for this round and I need to be. Maribel joins the party for the third time. New tires on the car, once again playing the I'm about to move 2500 miles card. You're really getting a lot of mileage out of that card. Alright. Kiefer's stuck at the castle, so he's not going to go on an adventure with us. But, Maribel can't lift the thing. So now what do we do? Well, Kiefer's back. Party join jingle. Back on the boot. Up on the spell, Flyra. Weren't you the one that two seconds ago said you're not ready for this conversation? <clears throat> Alright. So now the return spell works. You can use return to jump straight to Rexwood. And use that to get to Engao, which is a little further north. Uh, it's completely optional to enter the town, but I want this potion. It's over here, isn't it? I did that in my last friend, too. Okay. This dude on my left is still standing there in disc 2. picky about fonts. I like the original FF Pixel Remaster font. I think it's better than the pixelier one. I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I'm supposed to jump in the volcano. He's old. I think I could still get there the way I was going, but it'd take a little longer. Hmm. 
When they released those, everybody was like, oh, the font's terrible. We got to immediately mod the game day one to put better fonts in. And I'm like, what's wrong with the font? I'm still not sure. Still not sure why so many people were screaming about that. I don't know. Maybe I'll never understand. Oh! Oh, big vehicle, drive fast. You're gonna hear a lot of that throughout this run. Keep in mind the speed limit in front of my house is 30. I want. Since it's a group of four, let's fight it. Add a couple of little faux pas, a little extra money in our pocket won't hurt. No more street noise. It would make more sense if it were like an hour and a half ago and everybody were going to work, but I guess 10 o'clock is loud vehicle time. Look at these babbles winking at us. There's some weird filtering on the sprites. Or if they're not the perfect distance away from the camera. They lose some of the, I guess, columns of pixels. That's all I do here. Yeah, okay. Uh, this way. So yeah, having their turn spell saves me from having to walk out of the volcano, and it saves me from having to walk all the way here. <laughs> ah! In all the runs I've completed of this game, I think I've only made it through one run without doing that. Not here specifically, but yeah, you know, there's like 20 opportunities to do that. And in most cases, you are trying to walk north after you warp in. So it's very easy to do. The statue. You need to inspect two of these statues so that Kiefer and Maribel both chime in their thoughts on what's going on here. <clears throat> what if these are real people who have been turned to stone? That's silly, Maribel. Stop being so silly. We're going to talk to this old man. He's going to tell us that Maribel is not being silly. They are, in fact, people turned to stone. I think? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't tell us. We figure it out. Okay, he does tell us. And he tells us the curse can't be lifted. And then he's like, wait a minute, I've got a thing in my pocket that can lift the curse. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, he says that uh, the item will not work on them. Because he's, uh, you know, it took him a few years to find this thing. Statues have been rained on in the meantime. But it's not going to work anymore. So, uh, take it with you. If you find anybody else who's been turned to stone, you can use it on them. We chill at the end, even though he says to leave. He says, don't come out at night. You don't want to be out here at night. Turns out at nighttime, the statues glow a little bit. And if we poke them, we get a little snippet of the past, of the day where these people were all turned to stone. Yeah, I agree. The guy has clearly never played an RPG. In an RPG, if you want to solve a problem, you just interact with everything once. 
Meaning, you get an item, you use the item. Problem solved. preview of that guy getting rained on on his way back from the bar. Then the statue crumbles to dust. We look at this bookcase and we find a handwritten note from some child talking about an underground base that's just as cool as his other underground base. It says it's near that place that father likes to go, referring to the bar. We'll go to the secret base in a minute, but we can't go in there until the sun comes up. Get another flashback here of a couple of children. Joseph, that's his name. That was not gonna come to me. My notes refer to pretty much every character in this game by name. I mostly did that to antagonize myself when I come back for a D-Rest run and don't remember who anybody is. Talk to this lady. This lady's flashback is actually important. So... We're going to get some information about the old guy here. Millie is her name, and Layman is the old man's name. So, yeah, this town was uh, going through a drought. They were praying for rain, doing their little rain festival. And Clayman was leaving the village to go get supplies from a neighboring village. And that is when, you know, while he was gone, there was a gray rain that fell over this town and started turning people to stone. And that's all we really know about the gray rain right now. We'll find out more later. But Clayman came back. He found everyone turned to stone. He set off on an adventure to find a cure. And by the time he got back, everybody, uh, the statues were too worn for the angel tear to work on them. Or so he believes. So, right now he's going to recap all that for us. Have you ever completed this game multiple days in a row? No. <laughs> Usually, even when I have like a three-day weekend where I could do it, I just don't feel like it the second day. Oops, I'm going to the end. Where am I going? Playground, maybe? I don't know. Head to bed. Kind of funny in this inn, if you have a dead character, the coffin gets put in the corner instead of in one of the beds. They actually accounted for that when they were scripting the sequence. Alright, found a staircase. So this is the kid's uh, secret base number two. I don't really know what it is. There's just, there's some beds down here, I don't know. But it takes you to the top of the rock in the middle of town, <clears throat> which gives us a good vantage point to spread the angel tier. So we're just gonna do that and see if it does anything at all. It does clear the darkness from the sky. And from secret base number one, out pops Joseph. Though the old man did not know about secret base number one, he did not know Joseph might have been hiding in there. So he was too afraid to try using the angel tear because he figured it just wouldn't work. Since we've thrown it up in the air though, Joseph is unpetrified. He's feeling good. Talk to him in a second, but first I'm going to go in his base and steal his thing.
Aktorn. Yeah, there's so many quest triggers in this game, it's kind of hard to get all the way through it without getting stuck. There is at least one person that can give you hints on where to go, that's Pamela in Ingao. Um, I think she can give you hints. I also know that there's a person in present Fall Rod that can point you towards Shard specifically. <clears throat> the Shards are really easy to skip. There's a couple of them that are just like, you had to just talk to everybody at every point to not miss them. I'm thinking of one in Crage specifically that I'll comment on when I pick it up. But that's like five or six hours away. Yeah, we show Clayman that Joseph is fine, he thanks us, we head off on our way. Where's the door? Oh, I'm in the water room, my bed. <laughs> I have to walk out to here before I can use return. So, we'll get a fish bell. This is a very, very short present segment. All we have to do is sail to where Dialac used to be, which is now the immigrant town. If you talk to this guy, his name is Sim, and he is trying to establish Sim City. Uh, the only thing that surprises me there is that that's the original localization. Not the new. Uh, oops, it goes here. Yeah, that's a very convoluted side quest where once you kick it off, you can find NPCs just hanging out in a town that just randomly spawn. And then they'll say, hey, you know, do you know a town that I could go live in? And you tell them yes. And then you recruit the person to your village. And then uh, it grows over time, very similar to the merchant town in Dragon Quest Three. I think I grabbed this on the way out of town, right? Gonna, whether I'm supposed to or not. <laughs> I'm in the very unfortunate phase of learning this run where I'm comfortable enough to not look at my notes, but not competent enough to not miss things when I don't look at my notes. <laughs> it's the hardest phase to get through in RPG speedrunning. saying something else. <laughs> puzzle elements haven't carried over? GQ8 definitely had some puzzles in its dungeons. Alexandria Dungeon, the one before Dolmagus, and uh, that one statue tower immediately come to mind. Hmm. 
that immediately come to mind in, uh, well, I guess the Quarren Tomb in 9. Kind of. That's... Very simple puzzle. Might be right about 11. Hey, <laughs> Woodsman, join the party. I should probably talk about this island. So in this island, um, we can't figure out what's going on. All the people are acting weird. Uh, so we recruit this guy who can talk to animals. And so he tries to talk to the animals in this town to figure out what's going on. Turns out he can't talk to them, though. What we're going to find out is that all of the animals were turned into people and all the people were turned into animals. So he's actually able to talk to the people-shaped animals. And I'm going to go in here and we're going to do some shopping. Uh, where's my shopping ads? Oh, I need to unequip real quick. Yeah. You put Maribel. Then tidy all. Very important that I don't miss the four item tidies in this run. It really messes up my inventory when I do that. So we want like five keys. Nine for Kiefer. I'm gonna go nine on here. Oops. I don't know what you're saying, man. <laughs> I'm gonna buy an extra stack to the for the bag. Ah, hiccups. And eight repellents, of which Maribel can only hold. I did that seem like she could hold all of them. Did not give her enough? No, that was right. No, nope, we're right. Everything's right. Okay. Yeah, she can only hold seven of them. We'll use the other one later. We have this defense seed for safety. Up to the lady. And then there's a treasure chest in the corner that we will talk to. Or open. So, the animals tell us a story here about a monster that was terrorizing the town, but then the legendary white wolves protected them from it, fought the monster, sealed it away, and essentially what happened here is that monster is breaking out of its seal. Get out of my way, dog. Dog that is not a dog, it's actually a person. Talk to this horse here. There are various tools. Various. And this dude with the vest over here, we gotta talk to him. It's actually a dog. <laughs> Let's see, meal break, yes. Bathroom break, yes. Sunlight, no. <laughs> So, yeah, when I was learning this game, we did a community survey to see if we wanted to start allowing turbo controllers in speedruns. Um, not, not because I was learning this game. Um, if we had ruled differently on that, I would have learned the Japanese version because there's no way I could sit through this entire game just with the FMVs as my only breaks. <laughs> but with turbo controller, you get quite a few two to three minute breaks, even a couple later on that are like four to five minutes. So plenty of time even to like, when we get to Deja, I'm probably gonna stand up and go microwave something and then 10 minutes later I get another break where I can go grab it. It's pretty convenient. And that happens at like, oops, like two in the afternoon, pretty decent lunchtime. Go straight out of town, right? Oh yeah, this is where I was supposed to get that copper sword. Doesn't really matter though. 
Okay. Now we go to the mountain where the monster is. And uh, we're gonna figure out eventually that the little kid that we just freed from the shack there is one of the white wolf cubs. cubs. So he's got the power to seal away the monster. And that, I think, is its mother. She actually joins your adventure in the 3DS version. Gabo's riding her for the entire game. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> One really cool thing about the 3DS version is that for all of the character classes, they gave uh, custom models to each of the characters. Please don't kill Maribel. It takes so long to leave here and revive. Okay, thank you. But uh, that includes Gabo riding a wolf around in every character class. Skip cutscenes in recent DQ games? By recent DQ games, do you mean only the most recent releases of Eleven? Because the original version of Eleven did not have cutscene skips, and it was a much longer game for it. <clears throat> I commented on this when I was going over the schedule at the beginning of the marathon, but like the original PS4 release of DQ Eleven, that speedrun was like 12 or 13 hours long, and now the PC version with cutscene skips is like five hours long. It's so much more digestible. As a runner, anyway. As a viewer, I don't know. I don't mind watching the cutscenes. Dragon Quest is chill. But, you know, it's easier to find time to do a run when it's five hours long instead of twelve. Very difficult to find time to do a Dragon Quest Seven run. <laughs> like I was saying earlier, I pretty much exclusively do it on Saturdays when I do it. And I gotta be in the mood for it, and I have to wake up at the right time. I can't snooze my alarm or else, you know, now the run's gonna end at 5 a.m. instead of 3 a.m. And then if it's just a bad day for it or I get tired like four hours in, you know, do I just do I quit it there? And like, it's hard to do. Especially the older I get. I was really in the mood to grind this game in like February too, but then like I was in the middle of two or three casual RPGs. Let me heal before I go in here. Uh, and by the time I finished with them, I was less in the mood for it, so I ended up just kind of de-resting it. I don't know if I'll do any more runs of this after this marathon. Might put it back on break. Because I played back-to-back, -back. I played Persona 5, followed by Dragon Quest Monsters 3 The Dark Prince, followed by Baldur's Gate 3, followed by Yakuza Infinite Wells. I kind of want to play some non-RPGs for a bit. That was like the last five months of my casual video gaming. Right, the lore update, we caught up to the wolf, and the monster has broken free of the tomb it was imprisoned in. We're gonna get sucked into a battle here. This is our good pal, Death Amigo. Uh, yeah, we're gonna throw repellents up. In a lot of Dragon Quest games, uh, starting around DQ4, if you throw holy water or repellents at enemies, it does about 10 to 15 damage. So Maribel's going to do that for damage here because you can't cast spells in this room. That was why I healed with Hero's MP before entering that room. Nice. Woodsman used an herb. That is all the Woodsman is good for. If the Woodsman attacks, it does one damage. Uh, Woodsman also likes to just stare off into space, and he likes to use herbs on himself when he's not missing any HP. So that's great. 
We love woodsmen. Man of the woods. <laughs> Death 50 hertz. <laughs> This fight's pretty long since we can't use spells. Uh, we will, will still have quite a bit of HP left when Maribel runs out of repellents. The number of repellents versus herbs I bring on her is just a balance between like how much healing I think I'll need for the fight and how much damage I'm gonna do. Oh, that might kill here. No, okay, good. Wind Beast does a lot of damage to Maribel. Nope. Hero won't survive if he parries, and may as well not parry. Great, and here is dead. Come on, Winston. Oops. I'm gonna use this ability Maribel learned called Retaliate. No. Oh, Woodsman. Woodsman, why? You saw he used an herb and nothing happened. That's because he healed somebody who wasn't damaged, even though Kiefer really needed the heal. Um, yeah, what Retaliate does is if Maribel gets hit by something, once Ben did it again, uh, then she will do the same attack. So if she gets hit with Wind Beast or with this blind attack, she'll use it on Death Pal. Which, if she survives the Wind Beast, will do good damage. If she does not survive the Wind Beast, doesn't get to do anything. Uh, oh, he went first. Come on, Woodsman. Come on, Woodsman. Heal Kiefer. Nice parry, Woodsman. Woodsman parrying, by the way. Woodsman has 65,535 HP. He doesn't need to parry. But he does. Don't marry well. Woodsman, please. Woodsman, we badly need herbs. Thank you. Woodsman, I'm starting to sweat this. Oh. Woodsman. Get Maribel. Oh, that's not good. It's kind of over. Kind of over, it's really over. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that sucked. Uh, what sucks more is I have to go somewhere else to revive. I think present Rex Wood is the best place. There really isn't a good place to revive. Uh, maybe present Ingao, I don't know. We'll go here then. The real problem is I just lost all those items. I don't usually lose that fight, but today I did. I think about how to recover from this. I don't think I have the money to load up on repellents again. They kept the crosses on coffins. Well, this is the PlayStation. We're not on Nintendo anymore. So that's a big part of it. This is an inn. Up weapon and armor shop guy. Oh, you don't sell items. Okay. Woodsman at. Does he reappear if I go back in here? Alright, 
I'm gonna buy the holy waters and we're just gonna figure it out. Uh, five herbs first. And seven repellents. Now we're down like 600 gold, which is an issue. Not the end of the world, but it's gonna affect things. So if I find any easy fights, I'm probably gonna take them. Uh, well, if it's stunned, it becomes an easy fight, I guess. Cancer Man. Cancer is such a strange translation of crab. I'm sure it's on purpose, but it's just... I didn't make the connection when I was playing Dragon Quest Monsters 2 and I bred a Cancer Man. I'm like, why is it named Cancer Man? Because of the zodiac sign. Like, okay. of modern Dragon Quest enemy names, but that one I could give a pass to. Honestly, the like the 90% of the names that are bad exhaust me so much that it's hard for me to appreciate any of the rest. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, okay. Broken clock is right twice a day. Did they actually do a good job on this, or did they just get lucky? The puns can't all suck, right? Okay, so I fought two fights, which gave me like 20 gold, which I think makes up for the 600 gold I lost in that wipe. Okay, good, we got someone else. Can you guys be put to sleep? Please, please go to sleep. Okay. Blaze wake something up? That shouldn't happen. He must have just taken his turn. Good, 18 more gold. No, I didn't heal. Alright, here we go again. Really? Missed the staircase. You like the DQ4 remake. You and I do not have a lot in common. I can tell this already. I bought the DQ4 remake in college, and I played it for an hour, and then I turned it off, and I bought an NES cartridge, and I didn't play it again for like 10 more years. Woodsman! Wow! You did something useful. And then you punch. This is basically just a boss that, no matter what, has a small chance to kill you. You kind of just have to deal with it. Because you can't play him 100% safe or you're just going to immediately run out of herbs. Thank you, Woodsman. And at pretty much any point, if he were to Wind Beast Maribel and attack him in the same turn, uh, she would die. It's also worth noting at this point, that any time Death Pal attacks, there's a 30% chance it will hit the Woodsman, who, again, has 65,535 max HP. So, you know, 
death pal. If you would really like to be my pal, you could try hitting one of those 30% now and then. I saw you do it once, but I've only seen you do it once. Too, but I need to. Get him, Woodsman. Or retaliate. I should have retaliated. I haven't blinded him with his own attack yet. Woodsman healed himself. Good. Yes, Woodsman. Thank you. Hey, keep your zone. Like, see, at that point, if I really wanted to be safe, I could have uh, controlled Kiefer and parried. But, eh. This is not really worth it. Find him. Good. Oh, I also forgot to point out, this is usually where I like to explain that from here on out, almost every boss in the game randomly takes either one action per turn or two. Don't kill Hero, please. Right, thank you. And that is a big, uh, good, good, good. Uh, like, determining factor of, you know, whether or not you die in some of these fights is if the boss just decides every turn he's gonna take two actions, that's way more damage, twice, in fact, as much damage as you would take if he just decided to take one action every single turn. But yeah, like, probably 80% of the bosses in this game are random one or two actions each round. Some of them are always two actions, some, some of them are uh, always one action. Alright. This is kind of a weird part of this game where there's this text box here that you can only dismiss by pushing to the right. <laughs> just because you're shoving the lid. It's kind of cool, but it's just a completely unique thing that I like to comment on. They coded anything for Woodsman dying in the fight? I don't know. I haven't tried killing off the 65,000 HP characters. Which is all of them, by the way. All of the guest characters that act in battle, to my knowledge, have 65,000 HP. And I think they are all able to try healing themselves when they're at full HP. <laughs> Is that true? Does Fosse ever heal herself? Maybe not. Uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I take one step. Right. You go back to the armor. Oh yeah, you can pick up all these little plants and it's very annoying when you're using a turbo controller and just holding the interact button. The ghost? The wolf is not a ghost. I believe the wolf is the last of its kind. The wolf and Gabo, but Gabo was turned into people, people so now there's only one wolf left. After that last spell Death Pal hit him with, you can say a couple of words now. Say what you will about Gabo, or about Kiefer, but Gabo is the true best friend of the hero. He's the only party member who, after he joins me here in a second, will never leave me. Kiefer and Maribel both leave at one point in the run, and 
Maribel comes back, but I kind of wish she didn't. My first playthrough? I don't really remember my first playthrough. It was like 15 years ago. I know it didn't bother me as much as it bothers most people. I probably expected him to come back, but he didn't. Okay, now we got a present orf. Ambo's joined the party. He is actually a good friend. He never leaves us like he friend Marilyn do. is like Ingao. They start with the same letter, but one's much further north than the other. Alright. There are encounters on the sea, but it's not unlikely that I make it through the entire run without seeing one. Ships and Dragon Quest always have very low encounter rates. I'm not gonna get involved with that. from this horse. So, uh, yeah, this town has uh, recovered from its, uh, you know, people being animals, animals being people, and now the people are all furries in the present. So they're having their furry festival. If you talk to one of the people at the front of town, they do this mini-game where uh, you have to guess which of these cows is a real person and which one's a cow. And if you get it right, uh, I think you get the monster book? Something like that. Not something we want in a speedrun, though. We will fight. Eh, it's too. too pretty. We want to fight a couple of things in here. We also want to heal before we get into these fights, but I didn't do that. Um, because we want Gabo to be at least level two for the first quote-unquote boss fight in uh, Fall Around, which that's probably what this is. Oh, it's Maribel nine. Maribel learned outside. We'll take that too. I don't think that's useful before she would have learned it anyway, but whatever. I gotta be a little careful using the full HP heal in here because I need to save magic for return, but I currently have an odd number of HP or MP. So I don't have to worry about it right now. Stone Fang to Gabo. Got a fist icon, but I'm pretty sure it's a Fang. Body Claw. This one too. So until we unlock character classes, Gabo is kind of like a Dragon Quest fighter, like a Dragon Quest 3 fighter. He uses claws, there's some other things he can equip, but they typically lower his attack power, like in DQ3. Yeah, Gabo starts at level 1 and he's got a really weird experience curve. He sits on level 4 for quite a while. But he gets the four very quickly. Also, I haven't really talked about the uh, how random encounters work in this version, but now would be a good time for that. Um, it's just like DQ8, how Keanu was describing it, where you enter a new area and it rolls a random number, and when you take that many steps, you get into a fight. So sometimes when I'm walking past a door, I'll just step in there and step out to reset that number. There's also some uh, movement on the overworld I was doing where the world's kind of sectioned off into grids, uh, pretty common in RPGs, where each segment of the grid will have different monsters in it. And if you cross over from one to another on the overworld in this game, it resets that threat counter. Ow, oh, the ambush. 
me. Back. Sleep on. Time we're gonna go in here before we go to the treasure chest down the way. So, turns out in the present year, Death Pal is still in his coffin. He asks me several times if I'm sure I want to let him out. But you have to do it to progress the plot. But it turns out that he has used up all of his magic and he turned into this homeless looking person. So, he's in kind of a cheerful mood. Like, oh, hey, you guys, how you doing? And, uh, he apologizes. He's gonna give us a shard in a minute, but before he does that, he's gonna try to turn Gabo back into a wolf because he thinks that's what Gabo wants. So, he's gonna cast a spell on him here. It's not gonna do what he intends it to do, though. It's actually going to make Gabo more human and able to actually speak with us. No. Gabo stops yelling, starts yelling at him. Hey, what are you doing? Stop doing that. Oh wait, hey, I can talk. This is better. I like this more. Leave me like this. <laughs> Death Pal cries about his own failure of trying to turn him into a wolf, but turning him into more of a person. And we get this Aqua Shard. Which I believe we're using to get to the next world, yeah. Yeah, Fall Road's a water level for some reason. Yeah. Most of the islands make sense with their uh, pipings. Fire, land, water, wind. Not all of them do, though. Northeast room, northeast pedestal. Okay, put that up there, that over here, this here, this here. No encounter on the way to Fall Road. That's uncommon, but we take it. Especially since I'm out of magic. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, that's worth. We've completed four of these islands. Twelve to go. Fourteen to go. Eighteen total. Um, and then we'll be done with disc one. Almost. We also have to beat the uh, beat the demon lord, and then we're done with this one. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the island of Falarod. The town is Falarish. Where am I going? We'll do that much later. Um, it's under attack by robots. This time, it's robots. Uh, we're gonna help with all that, but first, we need to get some better equipment here. Not sure how much... God, isn't there like a little money in this pot? That one? Okay. 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 It was a little money. A very little money. A very little money. Mech soldiers? Mech soldiers? I'm not gonna let them get in the way of business. 
This guy knows. Alright, what am I doing here? I sold the copper sword. Oh, I didn't tidy hero. That's fine. Do it after this. Uh, I sold a leather hat. Mallet? I never bought the mallet. Okay, well... That's why I lost so much gold when I died. Uh, I shouldn't have sold the knife. Okay, I need to sell this. Uh, what are we going to do about this? Keep the copper sword, that's what we do. I also made another mistake that I don't want to talk about. I sold something else there that I wasn't supposed to sell. Oh, I might go for the rock axe just to have 200 extra gold. What do you got here? Yeah, scale armor is 450. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, he still says the thing, huh? We're gonna buy the spear. I am not gonna have enough defense power. <laughs> well, mighty hero. Be a merchant in here. for Gamma, but I've got some in the bag I can pull out. And hat goes to Kiefer. There's clothes go to Gabo. He's naked right now. That strength seed I picked up is in the bag. And seed Maribel. Uh, Mystic, not Gabo. Got more cloth armor. Put that to him. Because I accidentally sold the leather armor. I also apologize if the wolfing is getting through the mic. Uh, copper sword needs to go to hero. That that isn't hero. That's the bag. Common misconception. No, not Wowie, the other one, unfortunately. Fang bugging you into their armor. Gabel gets the trail voice claws. Uh, bag potions. This is important. My. That probably should have gone to the bottom. Agility seeds go on Gabo. All of my agility seeds I pick up in this run will go on Gabo. Seeds. I'm gonna put them all on hero. Uh, I want the life acorns. Pretty sure at least one was supposed to go on Maribel. Give the other to hero. Okay, and then I need to pull some of these out for Gamma. Dilili, Enough. Uh, swap this down here because I don't want to use it on accident. Okay. Um. Four fifty. Okay. Probably not gonna happen. All right. Let's go in here. I'm gonna join the army. I think there's actually something in one of those drawers I need to pick up in a minute, too. Oh, 
I don't know. Okay, so this fight is the reason I wanted Gabo to get at least level 2 before coming here. Unattended for two seconds, so she's gonna start barking. So hopefully, Gabo just keeps this guy stun locked and Kiefer beats him to death. Fire slash. Should be about done. Three bark. All right, knees down. Okay, so we basically just joined the army. They call us mercenaries. I don't know what the difference is between being a mercenary and joining the army. I wouldn't think there would be a test to be a mercenary. You just kind of pay me, you know, and I'll fight for you. So whatever. Uh, I'm going to look in these drawers real quick, and then we're going to go talk to the king and get formally initiated. Okay, shield, good. Essentially all that's going on for the next few minutes here is the fight against the robots isn't going well, so we're joining the army, we're meeting with them, trying to discuss what our options are. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what to do about Hero not having any armor. <laughs> I wonder if I can squeeze out enough money for scale armor. That would really help. It'd make the fight a lot safer than it normally is, even. Talk to Captain Trad here. He just talks about mech soldiers, schmeck soldiers. And then we're gonna need to go around the room and talk to everybody and get their ideas on what we can do about these robots. <laughs> talk to Haynes. Haynes is a soldier that doesn't like to sit in the same chair twice in a row. Weapons display. I like this guy's suggestion on the left. Are there machines? Can't we just walk up and turn them off? 
Like the Roombas we got? Where am I going? <laughs> so the real suggestion that comes out of this is that Dred's brother is uh, living off out in the sticks. But he likes robots. He's a mechanical engineer. Maybe he can do something about all these robots. So. We're gonna go talk to him. He's not gonna be very cooperative. Um, I forget why he's mad at Trad. Trad mad. Mad at Trad. Mad Zeb at mad at Trad. I don't know. Ooh, robots. I don't have any MP. That's cool. That's cool that I didn't get my MP back after that fight. I knew that they could do terrain slashes on one train. Alright, well now I gotta pay to revive Hero. Oh, I messed up. I needed to talk to him before I went out there. Jeez. of it and he still doesn't give us any attention. Okay, the door's shut now. Maybe it'll be quieter. Alright. He tells us to get lost. Great, thanks. Good, no encounters. Uh, left guard house. I think somewhere along there in that walk, there's one of those lines, like I mentioned, that reset the overworld encounters. But you can still get a fight somewhere in the middle there.
told Haynes that Zebit didn't really help us. Trad gave us a mission to just go up to the guard tower and watch out for robots. We're gonna go up there to relieve the guy that's up there now. Then the soldier wearing completely different armor shows up. I don't know where he came from. I'm pretty sure the soldiers in the town are wearing the same armor as the soldiers at the castle, but maybe I'm wrong. So the town's been attacked. It was hit pretty hard. They're saying we gotta organize everybody. Reinforce the town. But Trad has a special quest for us. He's gonna come with us, and we're gonna go talk to Zebit again. this town sold leather armor. <laughs> Plant. If I can put him to... Oh, I can't. I have no magic. Flee, then. Not normally plant. Yeah, I can agree with that on DQ9. There's a lot of weird little design choices they made in that game that are clearly targeting people playing multiplayer with each other. But if you're playing the game in the United States, you're probably not playing Dragon Quest IX multiplayer. Zebit refuses to help us again, and then we walk out here and there's this robot waddling around. And then it breaks. And Zebit's like, oh, I'm gonna fix this. Right here. My hero is still dead. Well. Should be fine. Clockbacks can take two actions in one turn, which means they can shake off, bark, and still attack. 
So this guy could act twice. Let's parry twice. Keeper should have this this turn. I mean next turn. figured out that these robots are being controlled from a radio signal coming from the east and he has come up with a way to jam that signal and when we do that the robots just kind of go crazy <laughs> to see remasters of OG DWM 1 and 2 Square Enix has made it very clear that they're just gonna withhold all of remakes of Monsters 1 and 2. We didn't get the PlayStation remake of Monsters 1. We didn't get the 3DS remake of Monsters 1. We didn't get the Switch port of Monsters 1. Wait, I went the wrong way. Uh, I need to get something upstairs too. Feels bad to be a Monsters fan. Instead, we just get that trash they released a couple months ago. person that hates it as much as I do. I mostly hate it because I like Dragon Quest 4. <laughs> the story is just complete garbage. But I guess if you don't care about the story and you just want to romp around Candyland as Necrosaro, go for it. You're not Hanes, are you? I hate most video games though. I feel like I don't, but a lot of people believe that. The Dark France was fun. Well, I just said if you don't care about plot, and so yeah, of course you thought it was fun. There's a character in the game that they named Toilet Trouble. What else I gotta say? is cute she's in an abusive and toxic relationship you can't say positive things about Rosa she needs to walk away from that and she never does it's not okay oh yeah and who's she in an abusive toxic relationship with oh right the viewpoint character the character that we're role-playing as self-inserting into we are the ones that are treating her poorly. What a good video game. It's so good. Wait, I need to talk to the random guard up at the bridge. <laughs> then we talk to Trad. Of course. 
Who wouldn't have guessed that out of all of these people I needed to talk to the random guard up there on the right? Oh, this island drags so much. Alright, now I can revive Hero. This is like the saddest part of this game to me, is the nun in the coffin right there. He says he needs to dig graves for the sister and everyone, but he doesn't have time. Trad and Zebit come out with their robot, and that will mean that I didn't miss anything. the radio jamming signal which is going to cause all the uh, mech soldiers in the base to go crazy it will affect them in battle too sometimes they'll lose a turn because of it so we're gonna wander through here work our way toward the boss in the heart of the dungeon Zombies in here. I'd go up here for some safety gold because we are hurting for money right now. just here. The robot at the top of that elevator mistakenly thinks that you are his boss, the Machinoid. Head down here. A little menuing to do here. Picked up needs to go to Kiefer. Uh, 
Strength seeds go on hero. Um, I think we're good. Unless someone else can use the leather shield. No. it is that Maribel lives. It's more important that Hero lives. I'm gonna make this swap. I'm gonna reorder. Okay. Oh. Back. Bark. Harry. Hero has no magic. I'm gonna turn around and use the end. I think. Ah! Alright. Reviving at the church does not refill your magic. Maribel already has outside though, so that's not gonna waste too much time going back. Separate groups for not fighting up. I almost have that 450 I needed. Ah, oh, but there goes 40 bucks. save the game too because we cannot recover now if we die come on now there's a door here Okay. 
Yeah, but I could use another herb before I get there. You know, between here, yeah. Again, all this camera rotation is because walking up and down is faster than walking left and right. I could have grabbed that gold on the right there too, and then I wouldn't have had to sell the shield. Didn't think of that. Okay, here we go. There are parries on this, right? So we gotta do three fights in a row here. We wanna end each of these fights as full on HP as we can. Both characters attacking should kill each one of them. Three fights. You get harder as we go. Thank you for leveling, that's nice. Okay. So this guy calls for help every other turn. him to stop him from calling for the second clock mark. HP is decent here. If I go to the next fight with this HP, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother Urban Kiefer. Adam? 
Okay. Now the fight that's actually difficult. <laughs> uh, evil mech. So... I had a playthrough where I was trying to get as far as I could just using Hero. And in doing that, I came up with a somewhat safer strategy for evil mech. But unfortunately, if Maribel dies, it's still a decent time loss because I can't cast outside at the end. Um, we're going to have Hero buff defense powers. Gabo, Bark, Maribel, Sap, and hope that he does not use Magic Wall turn one. Evil Mac loves casting Magic Wall turn one. But today he didn't. Didn't get a chance. We really want to lower his defense at least once before he casts Magic Wall. That will really speed up the fight. Oh, he missed his Magic Wall turn. Okay. Oops. Burn. Bark. Snap. This next hit will be a Dazzling Light or an attack. Okay, but he's gonna miss it. And he cast Magic Wall. Okay. So now we're gonna stall it out. Keep barking, I guess. Maribel can try sap a couple more times, but it's probably not gonna work now that he's cast that. I think you need help. He's, he's just not dealing damage. Maribel can just carry. Important as the others. Hurt yourself. As you can imagine, it takes a minute to kill this guy when you're doing 13 damage at a time. Okay, that area saved her life. Evil Mac just decided that Maribel was gonna die that turn. Fortunately, she was parrying. Did I have her keeper? I don't know. It never hurt to upper keeper more times. Okay, spell resistance reset. But he can cast it again this turn. Uh, this fight's great. And slash. Hey, good turn to heal yourself. Good, okay. We should be fine as far as we should win the fight. Okay, we got the other stuff. We should win the fight soon. Look at how much more damage we do now. <laughs> no, that should have been an upper on Kiefer. Why he still has his defense power? Ooh, Kiefer went before Hero. Okay, still got it though. I got lucky. Sometimes it lasts more than four turns. Alright, good. I haven't had Maribel survive that fight in a while, so I'm happy about that. And, uh, completely accidentally, I saved enough magic for him cast outside. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, rip Gabo, but it doesn't really matter that he died there. We'll pick him up before the next boss fight, he doesn't need the XP. And I don't need him to get out of the here or to travel around the overworld. money because we are still hurting for cash. I don't know if you can fight these or not. I don't know what they do. They poison Kiefer. Yeah, no. No. 
Okay, we two groups. We're gonna run. Mirabel doesn't have any magic either. I don't know why there are zombies in here. I have an antidote somewhere. Unfortunately, after we defeat Evil Mac, we are rewarded. So we're gonna come in here, we'll talk to the king. Trad and uh, what's his face have gotten over whatever it was they were arguing about. <clears throat> and uh, is a princess here? Huh. I wonder what she's up to. <laughs> I don't know. I believe it. I don't know where Zebit's going. That's not the way out. I guess the princess is into him, though. The king gives us a bug knife. It's a royal treasure. I'm pretty sure he's lying about that. You can buy these in the next town. <laughs> Maybe not the very next town, but I'm pretty sure you can buy them at the prison colony in Dharma. I appreciate the gold, but I don't really want the weapon. Speaking of the gold, now Haynes is sitting on the right side. Boom, 1200 gold. If you do not talk to everybody after uh, completing this mission, then you just miss out on that 1200 gold. I want to revive here. What's the next island? Yes, I do. As much as I hate present fall rod, I am looking forward to being able to stand up for like a minute and a half. <laughs> uh, yeah, that didn't give me any MP. That's fine for now. I need to save some so Hero can cast Return, so I can't just use the heal all tactic. Oh, the wind's catching the front door. I need to get up and close it. brother does not close the storm door and it doesn't close itself anymore. Uh, where am I going? It's fish bell, right? Yeah. conversation happens. was not as uh, long as I thought it'd be. Thought it would be this one. <laughs> I 
Yeah, all that's going on in this section, um, you know, this is like a hundred years in the future from what we just did. And the population and the king don't quite know what happened back then. They just know that Zebet's house out to the west is now a forbidden zone. They're trying to advance their own technology here. So there's this kind of a theme of repeating past mistakes going on here. And the only guy who seems to know the truth is this bald dude who runs up here in a minute. Nobody wants to listen to him though. we go. Most of the present overworld doesn't have random encounters in it, though I can rarely remember where encounters are and are not in the present. Alright. The king says, stay out of my way or you're under arrest. I don't know why he pushes me into the house like that. And here we find the robot that Zebit was working on. Um, and that's Zebit there in bed. He has died and the robot doesn't understand this. The robot thinks he's sick and just keeps preparing soup for him, thinking soup will make it better. <clears throat> just feed Zebit soup, make Zebit better. Soup does make a lot of things better. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it actually worked here. This whole scenario is completely unrealistic, though. If you just kept dumping soup on a dude for a hundred years, raccoons would come in and take his bones. But, you know. It's a fantasy world. We have to suspend our disbelief. In here. Oh. This is why you don't pick up extra items. Looking for extra gold, you'll end up with tiny metals. Do you want tiny metals? This is how you get tiny metals. Do, 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 do. You just wasted three seconds. We'll make it up somewhere else. Are any of these conversations flagged in my notes as taking more than a minute? Yes, okay, good. Good, okay, good, because I need that. I'm kind of feeling an early launch. I might go grab that sandwich out of the fridge when that comes up. needed to do a better job on that FF6 minigame, because if you don't know what's going on, then you can just spend 30 minutes feeding him fish and he doesn't get better and he doesn't die and you aren't sure what's going on. That was definitely my experience with, the, with that casually. It was like, am I supposed to keep doing this? Am I supposed to be doing something else? I 
Like, I don't know, maybe the fish is just being chill, you know? Fish can be chill. Yeah, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Alright. There's kind of a continuity thing here that doesn't make sense to me. Um, the bulb guy says, hey, uh, you should repair the robot. Uh, my daughter or granddaughter knows where the parts are. Go talk to her. So we just did that, but I don't understand when the parts were removed from the robot. Because I think it's supposed to have happened after they took the robot from the shed. But then when would the bald guy have had time to take them and bring them to this town? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the parts were removed before we even got here. That's why it was just standing there instead of making soup. Question mark. But here's the parts. For once in my life, I did not forget to get the tights out of the end, so that's cool. This jail isn't locked at all. Both sides of it just have a, <laughs> a lever that opens the door. Yeah, and they have a conversation. We brought the parts here so the guy can fix the robot. Um, so he's just gonna try to come with us. Joins the party. And then the guard's like, wait, you can't do that. Here, wear my costume or they'll see you. <laughs> Apparently, this is what the dude looks like without his armor. And there's kind of a joke there about how young Armand looks now that he's wearing the armor just because it copied the sprite of the guard. Why would armor make him look younger, you know? Alright. So in the past, I was able to jump down a hole in the southern tower to get to the bottom, but they patched it in the present. Oh, you can fit through there. Look at that. Uh, so yeah, we gotta walk. This is a two minute scene, so I will be back in two minutes. Enjoy robots.
Yeah, I figured I didn't also have time to check the mail. thing to do before we go back to the past. Oops. Perhaps unsurprisingly we need to go get a shard. <clears throat> Armand is back here with his granddaughter. She gives me what she thinks is a useless rock. Two least favorite islands. The northwest. Really, it's a fire? <clears throat> this island is not fire. I should make that clip be my Twitch sub alert anytime I'm running this game. save before we fight this boss. Sorry, my brother walked back in. Apparently he was just running cookies into work and he doesn't actually go into work for another hour. <laughs> Alright. Get this, and then we got some menuing to do before the boss coming up. Now this is running on a PlayStation 2. North American 70k model. I shouldn't have gone up to Sears. Oh, okay, it didn't matter. Thought I ruined it. Okay, my menuing. Bug knife needs to go to Maribel. She has it. Perfect. Uh, it's also Maribel. Lamb armor. You have. My inventory is really messed up. But a Gabo. Um, noble armor goes on Kiefer. If he needs them, he does not need them. Okay. Replace Maribel's extra items with them. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> this fight is obnoxious. Uh, he can do a lot of damage if he feels like it. This is the Rainmaker. So he has a pattern where he alternates between attacking and then picking from one of five different moves. Um, there's also another random one or two actions. This is the attack we really don't want to see. The breath attack. If you do that, it wasn't fine. All right. Did both of those snaps work? No, okay, I didn't think so. 
Uh, I should probably just reset on that. This is going to be slow even if I do beat him. Maybe he won't use heal. Kill someone else on reset. Flush <laughs> legs, really? His defense reset. Breath. Not good timing. every turn. Again. Again, ev every other action is guaranteed to be physical, and it's like he's filling in all of the rest with breath. Here's heal more. Whatever. I need a recovery turn, I'll let him have that. He can cast that twice. Probably should have Gabo Perry, he doesn't have a weapon. Now it's still did 14 damage. Turn kind of counterbalanced the heal more. Uh, his defense reset, right? Whatever. Okay, so... Uh, Angel Tear. So this is another town that got affected by the gray rain. It turns out the Rainmaker, that little anteater dude, caused the problems all along. Um, but it has not been nearly as long. This just happened. So, we throw the angel tear up, it will thaw out the town. And everybody's fine except for one person. We'll go out there and see. Because uh, after we saved the town, the, the other town that was uh, petrified, Clayman went around the world and warned everybody about the Grey Rain, so these people knew to run inside when it started raining. However, that didn't stop them from being transformed. It just stopped the elements from getting them. But two people didn't make it inside. Pepe and Linda out here. Is it Linda or is Linda the maid? I don't know. I don't really care either. I hate this island. It is the worst. Except for the other one that is actually the worst. Um, talk to you. Yep, it's Linda. Okay. So yeah, Pepe and Linda were stuck in the herb garden out here, so Pepe jumped on her to protect her from the rain. So she's fine, but he didn't quite wake up from the uh, angel tear. He's still unconscious. So we're going to have to do something else to help him. I don't know why we're helping him. Nobody in this scenario comes out of it happy, but we'll get to that. <laughs> spicy drama. It's not even... nothing spicy has happened yet. This whole town is a big soap opera. Linda's engaged to the guy with the turban, Iwan, and, uh, I don't know if either of them really like each other, I don't know. Pepe likes Linda too, but he's a statue now. That sucks.
forgot a cutscene or two. That's fine. We'll do them now. Need to go up to the second floor first. Yeah, pissy the line I missed. <clears throat> the Ewan's worried about Pepe. He wants to help him because she know he knows that uh, Linda's friends with him. Then the maid, Kaya, she's trying to make out with Iwan in here. He doesn't really like her, but she still wants to try to break up their marriage so that uh, Iwan will run away with her instead. Um, oh, that was right. Now we go up here. Random merchants talking to Linda. I'm gonna buy some more herbs because we use them all. Oops, I'm gonna accidentally say no. Herb 9, for Gambo. Herb 9. More at Maribel. I don't need to that sell some stuff. And sell Kiefer's armor. Uh hero's weapon. So the bug knife. I'm not even going to attempt to save the tights in this run. Because we're low on gold. I need 4,600 bucks here. Uh, what did I miss? There's an extra scale armor. It's still this short. Funny hood. Uh, that's good. Um, do I have enough herbs? Five herbs in the bag. I don't know what the end costs, so I'm not gonna try to squeeze this. He runs out of there. I don't know where she goes. That's not it. That's not it. That's the same one. Okay. Actual names? Do they not have actual names in the... I'm sure they don't. Uh, actually, real quick, I'm gonna go up here and hit this trigger. Yeah, they made poisoning the dog as DQ sex. Mr. Barkington. I'm sure that scene is a lot more serious in Japanese when the dog is not named Mr. Barkington. But hey, everything has to be cute in the new localizations. Seriousness is not allowed. Japan or outside of Japan? In Japan, yes. Oh, I don't have revival money. Whoops. I mean, if I have Gabo but not Hero, I need about a hundred bucks. Didn't budget for that. Uh, let me sell the other bunny hood. Now I need to keep that. Uh, seashell helmet. That should be enough. You just hope that Gabo gets a better helmet from Lucky Panel. Not you. I keep trying to talk to her to 
you know, spend less money since I've got the dead characters, you know, the end costs less. Then I'm remembering, oh yeah, but I don't get my money, my MP back from the revival, so I have to do the end afterward. Yeah, the localizations, like the newer localizations of the remakes and stuff, would probably bug me less if I hadn't played the original versions growing up. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. Because then I play a remake and it's like full of puns and stupid names and accents and I'm like, this isn't what I wanted. I'm fine if you change the translation a little bit, but, you know... Don't turn it into this. It's not even the same game at that point. But now we're reaching a point where the remakes have been out for so long that there are people who grew up with the remakes. And it's just sad to, when I hear people say that they like the DS version of 4. I know at least two people have said that in chat today. You make me sad. I'm not gonna say otherwise. I don't want to lie. story stuff I didn't talk about? I don't really care. This monster is almost completely unrelated to the rest of the island. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody tells you to come beat him up. I think you just kind of explore the island and find a cave with a monster in it. A cave mon, perhaps. And, uh... That's why we're here. The mountain exists, therefore I must climb it. Only one encounter. We're gonna die to this boss for sure, and we're gonna get like eight encounters walking back here. <laughs> Alright, first order of business, remove all of our armor. Hang on. because I don't have any more herbs. Hey, Joshi D, thanks for the good luck. <clears throat> okay, so this boss is obnoxious. He alternates between taking one action and two actions. Um, and these jewel bags almost always cast defense on their first turn. There's like an 80% chance that they cast defense, so that's why we take all our armor off. We have Maribel use Retaliate, uh, so that she casts uh, defense on them in Retaliation. And now I'm in a tricky spot. I think I'm going to put my armor on. Because Cavemon's going to take two actions this turn. And I'm going to parry with most of the team. Jewel Bag A can still cast defense, but at least I want to get him from him. Okay. <clears throat> Not in a great spot. Gonna have Hero, Herb, Maribel, Gallo, Herb himself, Maribel, Perry. I want to stay above 40 HP on everybody at all times. They should be parrying if they are not above 40 HP. Especially on the turns where Cavemon takes two actions. 
We have not seen Cave Mom's worst attack yet. He's cast Fireball three times, but he also has Fire Bane. Uh. It's a lot stabler. They're gone. You have to herb yourself. Okay, you went first. Also, for reference, Gabo is my fastest character, followed by Maribel. So if anything needs done early, I have them do it. very slow, but I'm trying to play it safe. Oh, I didn't give Hero the potion back. Hope I don't need him. Is this the action turn? Maybe should have carried on some people. Okay. He was nice. Should be about out of magic too. Jewelback still not dead. Should be good. I think he's out of magic. Um, not heal. Upper yourself. Herb, DQRTA, Mirabel cast snap again. If he has out of magic, then I shouldn't lose this. If he surprises me with a Firebane, that's not gonna be good. I do not want Maribel to die or I have to walk out of here. First try cave on fight is always good, no matter how slow it is. It doesn't matter at all that Kiefer died. This is the last boss that Kiefer fights, so he doesn't need any more XP. I don't even need to revive him. Do not cast outside yet. I don't know why he grabbed that 50 bucks. I don't need it.
sein. and my lucky panel is it <clears throat> I think it cost a hundred gold to play no I think it's 200 gold to play all right this is something that I really don't like about the design of this game this is the only time that you have to travel into a past version of another island um, any other time that you have to leave an island's past to go get something, you go to the present. But this sets a really nasty precedent where for the rest of the game, you're going to be wondering, you know, do I need to go check out other past islands? I don't know. But again, fortunately, that isn't actually the case. You might be required to double dip Dune, but not to solve another island's problem. I'm not sure how that quest trigger works. There we go. Tell Pamela what happened to Pepe and she gives me a thing to fix it. That's all that happens here. It's an interesting crossover between the islands, but it would have been better if they sent me to the present instead of the past. Also, Pepe's family is so poor that his entire family lives in the backyard of the rich dude there on the right. And uh, they're just all his servants, I guess. I don't know. Orlock. Oh, good, you're okay. Why don't you sleep in the real house today? Go back to your stick house tomorrow. It's the Fish Festival song. I don't talk to anyone. Go off and look for Pepe. He is up in the corner. I missed something. I need to talk to Borlock. He says exactly the same thing the other guy said. Okay, neither one be the trigger.
I haven't done a like recent comparison of what load times are like on an original PS1 for this game, but I'm currently playing on a slim PS2 with fast disk speed on. Wait, did I wipe earlier and have to reset? No. No, I've saved twice, but I haven't reset the one. The first time I reset, I need to set fast disk speed again. For some reason, only the first time. Second reset, it remembers it. So, Pepe tells Linda he loves her. Linda's like, oh, but she won't leave the other guy. So, Pepe runs off and dies alone somewhere. Linda eventually runs off and dies alone in a nunnery. Uh, the maid doesn't get what she wants. Maybe she does, I don't know. Really just nobody comes out good in this. I hate Kiefer's alive. I don't want to fight this. I got all the levels I need anymore. Airbell's 11, really. Interesting. I wonder what Hero needs for 11. Probably a chunk, though, because Maribel 8 means Hero's 250 away from 8. He probably still needs four or 500 more XP. I don't usually have the Maribel at that level, though. Turn to Ingo. People text me when I'm not working. Bless. Minter. Okay. First thing we're going to do here is buy spider webs. Which are an item that will stun a, oh, stun a single target in battle. Throw those in the bag for now. Grab some more items in here just for money. not the present version of Verdhem, by the way. This is a different town built just a little bit to the east after everybody just kind of gave up on Verdhem. Left of Verdum, good riddance, wind shard. Southwest Dream, Southwest Pedestal. A lot of story coming up in this island. More importantly, there's long enough dialogues that I can eat my sandwich. Talk to the pedestal.
is also where we're going to be losing Kiefer. I don't have to talk to him. Something in here, right? Or is that the present? That's the present. Cool. Go in here. Nope. That one. You can try to talk to this lady across the stump, but it's very difficult to talk to people across round tables in this game. You end up talking to the wrong person when you're just not even remotely facing them. Uh, talk to the adults in this tent. I think one of the chests on the left here has a shard in it, but I don't need to pick it up. Any shards that you don't collect in here will be given to you automatically at the end. Mm. I'm gonna cut some come up here. I'll talk about the story later. I'm trying to get my sandwich right now. Priorities. So yeah, this is the Deja Camp. These guys are all trying to revive God. Um, to do that, they need this legendary Tula player, which they got, and they need the legendary dancer chick, which they've got. So, all they need besides that is to make sure it's the right time. So we're gonna go off and do dance the dance and play the Tula and see if it's the right time. And then it's going to work, and then uh, everything's going to be solved because we're going to have God. Go grab this bottle of Viva Grape, which definitely isn't wine because Kiefer is only like 18. Just Viva Grape. Getting grogged up on Viva Grape. That's not who I wanted to talk to. This is why you don't talk across the round tables. So Kiefer just flirts with this girl who's flagrantly engaged. Uh, just kind of doesn't care. He's a prince, it's fine. <clears throat> but also Jan and uh, Layla aren't supposed to be together because one of them's... Or both of them are... I don't know. Something to do with them being involved with this ritual. I think it's because of Jan's tattoo. Ooh, here's the real big break. Hmm. 
can actually eat my sandwich during this. Huh? This is the three minute scene. Biggest break so far. Oh yeah, apparently the tulip lane can fend off monsters. Maybe we should go with them instead of getting fights along the way. specifically comment that I want Hero to hit 10 during this walk if he's not already. So having Maribel 11 might help a little bit later. We got some boss fights coming up in the next island where every little bit counts. <clears throat> Does the game deal with us unexisting ourselves? Uh, yes, actually kind of how disc 2 starts. <clears throat> disc 1, we go through all 18 of these islands, unsealing them and getting them restored to the present, but at the very start of disc 1, or disc 2, our island gets sealed away with us on it. But we'll get to that in about 9-10 hours. Why is the camera rotated 90 degrees from where it, it normally is? working 9 or 10 hours. I'm sure there's people who woke up this morning, saw the stream was live, went to work, and they'll be back before it's done. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what anybody says at either of these camps. Probably nothing important. Oh, we're getting closer to the shrine. We're looking for a way to drain the lake because the shrine that we need to do the dance at is underwater. Um, we're 
run through here. Dungeon's fairly short, and like I said, there's no boss at the end of it. So we're probably only gonna get into a couple of fights. <clears throat> also at this point, Kiefer is gone from the party forever. So, see ya, Kiefer. <clears throat> he decides this girl that he met today is more important. Turns out I can read it too. I've got a magic tattoo that lets me read the old script. <clears throat> it says asceticism can lead you to God, and uh, if you're like me, you have to Google what that means. It means don't follow the treasure chests. Except this one, this treasure chest is fine. This room's gimmick is just invisible paths. Well, the kingdom does get a new heir, but we'll get to that in a few hours. We'll get to a lot of things in a few hours. That treasure chest is another shard, and like I said, if I don't pick them up, I'll get them at the end of the chapter. <clears throat> this one? Wrong. Open the wrong box. After you drain the lake, there's no more monsters in here, which is why I'm kind of backtracking to pick up these items at this point. Oh, I'm gonna head over here and pick up another safety defense seed. up here in about two minutes um, we're gonna have another FMV uh, if you still have your eclipse glasses that uh, this would be a good time to put them on you really do not want to make direct eye contact with this cutscene
soon as I leave this building. Revive God. I don't know why they think this is gonna work, but... Isn't she lovely? Kiefer leaves the party for this. Again, there's a fit and leaves. Yeah, it said it's Jan's birthmark. <clears throat> I don't know. Somebody with Jan's birthmark, he can't marry anybody unless God's revived. I don't know why it works that way, but hey. Oh no, I was eating my sandwich and I didn't sing the song. Oh well. <clears throat> Thoughts is joining the party. I'm sure he'll contribute a whole lot. Oh wait, no, he'll leave in six seconds. <clears throat> Let's count them. No, it's gonna fade out. For, no, it's not. Three, four, five, six, and he's gone. <coughs> Character is replacing Kiefer in the game. Uh, <laughs> Trying 
after and like how long? Five hours maybe? Five, six hours I think is when we get Ira. We have to put up with having three party members for quite a while. <coughs> Kiefer, Dots was wounded yesterday. This isn't nice, you're bullying him. stand up real quick when I walk out of here. I might be a little late getting back. Here, right back. Kiefer's gone. He says, hey, tell my dad what happened. <clears throat> and so we have to go tell him, hey, uh, your son is stuck in the past, by the way. He ran off with a girl he met like two days ago. <laughs> a shard and tells us to get out of here while he digests this. The news, not the shard. We got a Rexwood. Terrifying horned beast that terrorized the prehistoric world. Pay five gold and we can see it. All right. Pay him five gold. Give him five gold. And there it is. If you talk to the scholar in there, it becomes apparent that he doesn't realize there's somebody out there charging five gold to come inside. That's not what I'm here for. It's three tiny metals. Time for a third uh, water pedestal already. good pace for finishing in 18 hours. This is one of the last uh, P 
paste deciders, though. Anyone who's played this knows what's coming up here. Alright, I'm gonna go back here and get this agility seed. And I'm gonna get as much money as I can. We're gonna do some lucky panel. Um, kind of mentioned before, not a huge help <clears throat> uh, to do this manipulation, and it takes me like 10 minutes to do, but I just like doing it, so that's the main reason. Yeah. Okay, let's claim my mirror. Need at least 4,000 gold, and like 5,000. Oh yeah, the spear. I knew there was an obvious. Uh... Am I off on how much gold I need by a magnitude of two? Okay. My bad. Um. Two hundred tokens. Whatever. So I have a tool here that when I go to the lucky panel table, I can type in the first board when it's revealed. And it will tell me what the next thousand boards are. The tool I found on a Japanese website that is currently not up, but I translated the tool and hosted it on my website. Too slow closing the lid again. Okay. Yeah, I have a memory card that registers as a pocket station. It's a PlayStation memory card that has an SD card in it, so it can have, like, infinity saves. <clears throat> Come on. Come on the well, hurry. I do have to reach the well before a certain number of random numbers have generated. Alright, the lucky panel. Boom, 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 boom. Type that in here. Interesting. I only typed in the left side and I figured that would be enough for it to find the right match, but it wasn't. Yeah, 
Yeah, like I was saying, I just type in the first board and then it tells me what the next uh, thousand boards are, but I'm not going to play a thousand. I'm not going to go past 25. <clears throat> really? This is a leather armor? Okay. Okay, this is... I'm going to finish this one just to show this pattern. Look at how many of these are adjacent. I don't actually want these items, but... There it is. <laughs> Next one I do want... Adjacent there, too. <clears throat> I am trying to make sure that the last pair I turn over is a. Uh, um, an item so that it skips one of the short jingles. Be very careful that I don't hit one of the shuffle hands or this is all broken. Okay, skip the next two. I'd probably be more careful about uncovering items when I'm just trying to skip the board. I'm not winning gold or mini medals, I'm winning the items that I'm uncovering. Which makes this very lucrative. There's also a couple of items in here that I cannot purchase for a while. So if I get any of those, then I'm ahead of the game. The iron axe that I got on the previous board, that's a weapon that I can't get yet. This iron helmet, I don't think I can buy that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really want as much defense power as possible for some bosses coming up. So money's good so that I can at minimum have the best armor that I can purchase in the next shop. Oh, and I am going to get steel armor two boards from now. Good. Because the next real boss fight that I have to win, there's a couple that I are forced losses, but the next one that I have to win has two bosses in it, two monsters that get a lot of critical hits, but they're not the traditional critical hits that ignore your defense power. They do two and a half times damage instead, which means armor is two and a half times better against those attacks than normal. Now, if you've heard me disrespect the defense stat in this series, I still mean it, but against these two particular guys, it's actually useful. The fight coming up is actually the only fight in this run that I expect to die to including Evil Mech and Cavemon. And you can tell Evil Mech and Cavemon I said that. Not Cavemon. Uh, yeah, Cavemon. Yeah, not Death Bell. I don't know why I died to Death Bell. That shouldn't happen, but it did. <clears throat> okay, do I want anything else in here? Uh, there's some more money much later. Oh, kinda. I mean, I'm here, I may as well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The coffee bee and his horse poop. Don't want that. That moth by one. Yeah, okay. gonna get Gabo's hat out of this but besides that I'm pretty happy with everything I'm finding. <clears throat> I think the captain's hat is the item. Three boards. And then I'll have plenty of money for the run. An EXP grind at the very, very end of the run, like in the final dungeon. We will do an XP grind on King Metal Slimes. But not until then. Just class grinding. Well, there was an XP grind earlier, I guess. We grinded to level 8 in Ingao. That was like 15 minutes of just grinding on trash. white shield, even though I'm going to have to skip a lot to get to it. So that is an item that I cannot get from shops, and I don't think I've had it before. <clears throat> this board apparently has clothes hiding on it, but I buy two of those here in a minute, so that's it up. Bronze knife, go away. What am I on? Yeah, that's fun. The one after this. Look at that icon. Pretty sure that's a very rare item on this board. worth looking at. No more hammer, no saw blade. We're out of here. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, the goal is just to get some decent equipment. Um, I was hoping for more items that would be better than what I can purchase in the next town. But I got okay stuff. More defense power for Gabba would have been good. But if you don't do the manipulation, then you're limited to what's sold in the next town anyway. So anything I have that can't be purchased there helps. Two slime knights want to fight. Maybe if I'd equipped my stuff, I would have fought them. But I didn't. This is the Dharma Temple. Just like Dragon Quest Three, we can change our classes here. Great. All right. I, yeah, my hero wants to be a warrior. Look at these big menus. This must be the real Dharma Temple. Okay, we just got to jump in the pool. Sweet, let's do it. 
Am I a warrior now? Oh no. They've drained all of my spells and abilities from my body. Alright. This is a very stressful portion of the game for anybody playing this casually, because you just lost Kiefer, now you've lost all of your spells and abilities. Um, and you have to deal with much harder enemies than you've been dealing with up to this point. Including a lot of pretty tough bosses. So we are going to tidy everything. Go back to my notes. And let's see what we got real quick. First of all, I got two defense seeds. Let's go on Maribel. Maribel's job in the upcoming boss fights is to stand still and parry. You have Hero, this axe. We'll not equip it yet, he'll equip it later. Okay, I'm looking at a seashell hat. Um, iron helmet for Hero. The steel armor is very good. Only Hero can use it though. Steel sword. That is not better. Yeah, correct. Iron armor. No, I can't use it. White shield. Maribel. That might actually just be what I buy for here. Here. Now that I think about it. Three agility seeds. We'll use all those on Gabo. Should be at least one iron shield in here, right? Or did I actually manage to not pull one? I guess I didn't pull one. <laughs> okay. These are very common items, so I figured I was safe selling it. Uh, let's see, shell, travel area, leather. Oh, white shields. Oh, iron shields. Okay. All this. And we need about 6,000 bucks. Four steel swords, okay. Well, there's our money. these evade shirts, clothes hiding, cloak of evasion, whatever you want to call it. Um, they give pretty decent defense power for where we're at right now and they give you a bit of a dodge chance. I don't know exactly what it is in this game, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 8th. Iron shield for hero. And nothing else that helps Gamo. Okay, now we go over to the item shop, and we're going to purchase the thief key. Now that's just a thing that you purchase in this one. Throw herbs on Hero. Throw herbs on Maribel. Some moon herbs, I'm loaded, so I'll just buy nine instead of the three my nets say to take. Nine antidotes. And most of the rest of this I will just put into herbs for the bag. Oops. I'm just gonna do two more stacks. One sixth on Cloak of Evasion in this game? Nice. Okay. Not like any as DQ4. I don't know if I believe that. Maribel still gets turned into paste with this thing. 
Sometimes I wonder if it lets you dodge at all. Okay. So yeah, all the people down here came to change their class and they got tricked and thrown into this prison colony. Every once in a while these monsters come down and they try to offer a soul sword to somebody. They say, hey, if you can stab five people with this sword, I'll give you your power back. This guy is new here, he's thinking about taking it up. But then the boss of this place shows up, Suifu, and chases him off. Get out of here. We don't need your soul sword. And then they beat us up. I don't know why they're beating us up and not the guy that was thinking about taking the soul sword, but hey. Also, I equipped all the stuff, so I'm gonna have to get hit extra times. Bully used herb. Good job, Bully. I was really thinking I would die that time. I can't help but notice here is still alive. Okay, that did it. Thank you. Thank you, Suifu. Yeah, this run just is this long. It's a very long game. This is island number 8 out of 18. And then after these 18 islands, we defeat the Demon Lord, and then we go to Disc 2. <laughs> Disc, two Disc 2 is only like two and a half hours long, though. It's not the halfway point. I'm pretty sure some executive told the developers of this game that it needed to be multiple discs to compete with Final Fantasy and all the other PS1 RPGs. And yeah, using the turbo controller you get a good number of short breaks. Most of them only one or two minutes long, like Hactical said, but uh, make sure that went to the right place. It did not. And give Maribel another herb so that her inventory is full. Okay. But yeah, there's a lot of long dialogues where you can just set your controller to auto fire and stand up and get water or whatever. Probably about one per hour, maybe more frequently than that. So, um,. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a couple of characters doing stuff in this setting. The knight-looking dude, Kasim, is trying to rescue the priestess of the Dharma Shrine. Flower's trying to help him out, so he's trying to lead us through here. He's like, okay, there's some monsters in here, but we gotta sneak past him. He gave us an item called the Wonder Rock, which is like an infinite-use herb. Casts heal in battle. But, uh, yeah, it turns out he just memed us. There he goes. I don't gather power use right now. I should just be using items, but... Two runs in a row that uh, Inop didn't use Hurricane. Okay, fine. Fingers? I don't know. They probably call them fingers on the DS version. 
One thing about the uh, modern localizations of the remakes of these games is that they do not like keeping the original names of anything. It's like they're allergic. It's like it, somebody told them not to. They rename every character, every monster, every item. Even if they can't come up with a better name. Yeah, they had a pun quota, and it was apparently difficult to hit, and even though this game is this long. The kids like puns. It's actually, it's probably more like Dragon Quest isn't selling, uh, do something weird with the script, and we'll see if it sells better. And then the puns happen. Instead of selling the series just because Dragon Quest VIII was a good game, they decided the series sold because of all the puns. And so Dragon Quest IV DS had more puns. Great, thanks. Where am I going this way? Thanks plus alpha translations. puns present in Japanese? Not to this extent. No, not to this extent. That is not true. I've heard a lot of people say that before, but it's simply not true. I'm not fluent in Japanese, but I know enough to know that there aren't as many puns in the Japanese script as there are in the Nintendo DS scripts. There are some puns, but it's not every monster name, every item name, every character name. Oh yeah, this guy's got the soul sword. But he doesn't want to fight Suifu. Even though that would have been the perfect chance to just stab him with it while he was off guard, but hey. So he's going on a soul shattering spree. There's two. There's three. Four. Suifu decides to have Kasim jump in, help him shut this guy down. I don't know why he doesn't stab Saji here. Instead he sees Neris standing all the way over there and goes for her, and Saji runs in the way. He could have just reached back and gotten Saji. And then there's that old dude over there if he wanted to go for six. This guy didn't pick his targets very well at all. Yeah, the Japanese spell names are kind of like onomatopoeias. Similar to what they did to the spell names in DQ8 and Onward, but... To my knowledge, they're not silly to the point of, like, Flasto. Full. Yeah. Dungeon's kind of hard to navigate with camera rotations. Expect High Spirit's record to be beaten when Hacktacle goes back for his second run. Yeah. 
I think he's currently de-rusting it. He really likes this game and just can't find time to do it because of his big move. But as soon as his move's over, he'll have all sorts of time. This little town exists. I don't know if it existed before the monsters took over or what. Maybe it did. I don't know. But a lot of the high priest's goons are hanging out here. They tell us the high priest is in this cave up here. So we'll sit through some dialogue and then go into the cave. animate when he moves. Look at him. He's just sliding everywhere. Okay, now he's animating. <laughs> Alright. Guess I'm and Flower are gonna join the party. I don't think Flower does anything, though. Save the game here, because this next boss is scary. second, I gotta clean something up real quick. to fight this thing. Oh wait, I learned last run. Gabo can equip the axe. Yeah. Do that. Okay. Let me go down here. There's a seed in here that I want. Yep. <clears throat> I 
I might actually give both of those, not the two things out of the chest, but the Life Nut and the Defense Seed. I might give them both to Gab out of this run, since Maribel's got an extra level. Maribel is usually not the character that dies. I get it. I didn't get an iron shield, okay. drop these things off onto these orbs downstairs that are generating the barrier around the High Priestess. And before I go up these stairs, I need to be ready for the fight, which means reordering and using a fake horn. Where are max HPs? 64? Doesn't she usually have 55? What did she get at that level? Everybody completely full. <clears throat> Once again, I'm going to check, make sure there's no items I didn't realize I had. Another Mystic Knot, that doesn't matter. Alright, let's do it. Ah, oh, RP Gamers, the team of streamers, alright. Lim, thank you, Tam, for the raid. Like I said, this boss is going to crit us a lot. They're pretty much just physical attacks. Um, I think Inop can blind us. Um, but the Priestess takes away a lot of the abilities that they had the first time we fought them in a forced loss. Maribel's going to parry. And equip the Iron Axe and hit guns with it. You, same thing, because Gons is a little less HP. And the Iron Axe hits a little bit harder than the Boomerang, even though it's single target. Oh, come on, Gabo. Oh, there goes Gabo. I did not make sure my leaves were on the right people. I think Gabo has them all. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna reset. That's my bad. I should have had a leaf on hero and a leaf on Gabo. <laughs> there was a very small chance that I would still win it from that point, but it's just not worth it dying that early. I 
I'm gonna pick up all these chests again. The sickle I shouldn't pick up, even if I pick up the defense seed. I should probably just skip them both. I don't know. Really, Babble Goon? I guess to continue describing what I was doing in that fight though, um, yeah, the iron axes are a little more attack power, so if I equip them and use them instead of the boomerangs, I'll do less damage per round, but I will kill one of the targets faster. And once one target's down, the fight gets a lot safer. <clears throat> so that's kind of my thinking there with equipping those. Um, there are some even stronger weapons you can get out of Lucky Panel too. At least two weapons that Hero can use that are better. The Saw Blade and the Warhammer. The Warhammer does pretty good damage to Gons. Yeah, there's a couple more boss fights. After this segment we unlock Dharma, but after this boss fight we have to do the tournament which is five fights in a row, and then we have to do Antoria. But none of those worry me as much as this boss fight. There's just nothing you can do in this boss fight. You don't have your skills, so you can't stack upper. You can't get better armor than what I have right now, with the exception of one or two things you could get out of Lucky Panel. Um, grinding XP takes a very long time at this point. Because there are no metal slimes. And really, monsters in general just don't give you much XP in this game. They don't expect you to grind uh, experience points. They expect you to be grinding uh, class levels instead, but we're not there yet. Okay, mix this. That should be good. Herb up. Good. Uh, give Gambo an axe. Captain Hat, Gabo probably would have lived. Maybe I should have had him parry when he was that low. It's hard to say. They hit Kasim. Remember when I said monsters sometimes attack your guest NPCs? It's kind of ridiculous that that's not happening more often. Okay, okay, you yeah, got two there. Whoops. Very, very rough. So I'm not gonna have a hero attack unless hero is full on HP, and I'm not gonna have Gabo attack unless everybody is full on HP. But it's slightly looser than that round two. But generally I just want to parry and let Chasm do the work. Though Chasm 
does not focus between the two targets. He'll just hit whatever one he wants to hit. And uh, he also goofs off sometimes. Right there, he's watching. Thanks, Kassim. Keep watching, please. I want to make sure you see this. You're getting mauled to death by this tiger and you're just watching. Good. Okay, good. I'll attack this turn. Maribel. Like I said, Maribel's usually got 55 HP max, so if she's over 55, I'll attack. I have not been crit yet and it's worrying me. But we're also far enough in this that I think we're gonna be okay. Gun should die really soon. Don't ruin it, don't kill Gabo. I think that tail wag is Gonza's crit animation. Stupid as it is. Okay, we should be fine. Still gonna play safe. Still gonna parry if hero is not at full HP. 79 is close enough. There goes Gabo. That did his max HP. Like 10 damage over his max. I'm gonna leave him because I do not want to die. That's probably overly safe, but I don't regret it. See you, Marvel. Do I leave Maribel at this point? I really want to keep one of my leaves. Okay, good. Yeah, two crits, two dead characters. Go figure. Getting the captain hat probably would have saved Gabo's life. I don't know how much more defense it gives, but he doesn't have a very good helmet right now. And once he gets a captain hat, that's what he wears for the rest of the game. Good, we still got two leaves for the tournament. Plus Antoria. I don't think there are encounters at this dungeon at this point, so I'm not gonna cancel on these stairs. Like I did on the way down. Looks for the win. The two characters who died are the two characters that were equipped with the cloaks. Alright. I don't know why there isn't any music in this scene. I guess it's serious mode. I don't know. So yeah, Zaji showed up, but he doesn't have a soul. That kind of sucks. Um, Neris sitting here in this building. 
Narasu is like perpetually sick, seems to be fine right now, and also she doesn't have the hair ornament that Kasim gave her earlier when they were making out in the tunnel. <clears throat> and of course Kasim's not going to call her out on it yet. Get us to level four, I think so. I was listing off the boss fights earlier that are left in this chapter. I forgot about this one because this one is forgettable. DQ12 will be using Unreal. Wasn't uh, DQ11 using Unreal? about DQ12 for me to worry about it. It's not coming out anytime soon. Better access equipment, so we'll just hit this guy. <clears throat> the boss isn't too dangerous. Um, he's got some spells. If he casts spells every turn, he could be kind of scary. But he's not doing that, so that's good. Bane and he has Fire Bane. As I keep as full on health as I can. just about to say that I might want to parry with somebody till Maribel can catch up, but we got it. Mm. Well, the reason you should have 2026 as an estimate for DQ12 is because they haven't told us the date yet. They're not going to surprise people with a Dragon Quest release. they announce a date it's gonna be like a year off at least I think if they're going to end the series, they may as well just end it on 11. But I don't know why they'd end it just because uh, two out of the three main guys are gone. Yuji Hori is still there. Maybe that one.
wouldn't blame them either way. I have a long-standing theory that Square Enix fans don't like RPGs anymore, so... May not even be any Square Enix in a few years. RPGs anymore? Maybe. But they've certainly deviated from making turn-based RPGs like with the Final Fantasy series. And their fans don't seem to be less happy with them having done that. So... Now! shield in this room. Do I remember what resistances it gives? I think it's better than the iron shield. Oh no, it's a kitten shield. Okay. Then Gabo can have that. So earlier I joked that Gabo is our healer for most of the run and that his high agility is his only qualification for the role. That really wasn't a joke. Um, he has very, very low max MP, and we're going to be using several max MP raising items on him. Literally every one that I find in the game. Well, no. Actually, that's wrong. The first one went to Maribel. But so we're going to get to the end of the game and Gabo's going to have about 72 max MP. Maybe higher 70s. And that does not give you very many casts of heal all and heal us. But we're going to make it work. How can you get me started on Saga? There's nothing to Saga. Empty shell of a video game. But clearly the entire series is just as empty and terrible. That's all I got on that. See? That wasn't so bad. There was no reason to pick that up. I have so much money. video games go 3D? Why couldn't they just stay 2D so I could find the door? That's all I want is to be able to find the door. I hate DQ6, but at DQ6 I can find the door. Oh, I didn't buy the chain whip or whatever whip it is. Enough. 
Oh, no, Captain, that's 28. Oh, I was off on both of them, wow. The 25? Okay. I'll come up with 25. First of all. wikis have a release date. You shouldn't be reading those wikis if they've got a release date that hasn't been announced. Wikis are usually more factual than that. Wow. I don't know. Video game dev cycles are so long that I just don't get my hopes up for a video game till it comes out. Especially if previous entries have disappointed me. Before I did that. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, am I full health? No. Okay. Control on DQ6? You mean Mudo? If you don't mean Mudo, there's a DQ3 style troll near the very end. Like the second to last boss. Before release announcement. I'm so indifferent. I don't care at all about DQ3 HD. I'll probably buy it and play it and be disappointed. It won't be a game worth speedrunning, though. There's no shot. Maybe it'll be interesting casually, but I have very low hopes. Square Enix does not like to change the formula with Dragon Quest 3. It would upset more people than they appease. Uh, I need my boomerang back. As well. You need to bark these. Confused and instantly snapped out. That's good. The version of DK3 not gated behind JP. I guess if you just want it to be better than the Switch version, that could happen. I was supposed to get the to rock back to Gabo. That's gonna make this interesting. That's fine. That's not the worst mistake I can make. Just you know, yeah, that's the worst mistake I can make. He's not giving Maribel the wizard ring. <clears throat> I guess I've just speedrun the early Dragon Quest games so much that I can't relate to what casual players are looking for anymore. You need this 
kind of actually parry on at the beginning. Why don't you herb Gabo? Bark the bolt rats around. It's DQ3, no matter what I'm trying to do in it, I can do it in one sitting. I also don't play games on the go because, I don't know, I don't live in a city with public transportation. And I don't have a good feel for how many people are actually, you know, looking for that. I'm gonna do this. That, I ain't backed out too far. Bang, good. Saji casting Bing is what I want to see in all these fights. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's not over. Probably should just reset and... I'm fine with that. The fight was even terribly. This round failed like four times. I've never seen it take more than two before. I did that, I saved again. Okay. Need to give the wizard ring to Maribel. Did not equip? Actually, yes, equip. Oh, yeah, she was supposed to have that earlier. Uh, she would have had a little bit more attack power if she had, or defense power if she had that earlier. Okay, now let's try this. Neither of those things were the reason that I lost that fight. That was just surround failing. But whatever. <clears throat> I think I would rather die to the second guy in the arena than... Uh... Kiss snap. Than use both of my leaves. Though I had only used one, but it was so early that I could easily see myself using the other. Thanks, 
It's another part of the uh, targeting with a uh, guest character that I should mention is that uh, group targeting spells like Fireball can target the guest character, and if they do that, they do not hit the rest of the team. That's really important in the last fight of this gauntlet here. Because the final boss in the arena has uh, the level 2 ice spell. And if that hits Zaji, it's great. If it hits me, it's not great. PQRTA is the winner. Thanks for the recognition, announcer. I don't know who's calling this. Okay, I want you to parry. Park the bolt rats. Round Garcia, please. Okay, there we go. fan of Pachisi when I first played the GPC version around of DQ3 around when it came out. But these days it just feels unfair and awful. You walk up to the goal and you have only a 1 in 6 chance to get into the goal and you've got two rolls left. Like that didn't feel good. You make it to the goal and then you spend all your rolls. Or you fall in a hole. You put a hole next to the exit every time. I know. The concept of a giant board game built into DQ3 is cool, but the execution is just stressful. Okay, got him. There are fair board games. Um, yeah, attack. Mark Thompson, Sleep Thompson. This guy's pretty nasty. He attacks on a pattern. He's in a, okay, good. Uh, and his pattern has really nasty spells in it. The Goopies are not a threat, though. They're probably the weakest enemy of all the cohorts that show up during this. Even if he goes to sleep, though, uh, physical attacks will wake him up. Okay, he went to sleep that time, but he woke up. Uh, Wonder Rock yourself, just to snap him. Saji, though. Just axe him. Mirabelle tried to sleep him. Yeah, okay. I need Mirabelle to use the wizard ring soon.
Yeah, Itadaki Street is nothing like uh, the cheesy. Need to surround this guy. Oh, surround cost five, I forgot. That counts so much. Hopefully this is his first try then. HP, which is about the average of what these guys have. They're all like 250 to 300. And that's the thing, though. Like, tactical saying, there are no good prizes on the, like, grass tiles. Drawers and treasure chests, sure, but the grass tiles, you're just gonna fall in a hole. I don't know. around on Jose? Yes. I don't know, I just don't want RNG to be that punishing. I want RNG to be something I can react to, that's why I'm speedrunning Dragon Quest instead of playing Pachisi casually. Okay, he's asleep. Uh, leave the beak rats. Beak rats? All for help. And as a whole, opens up in the group. Okay. You really want Zaji casting Bang on this group? That's why. Okay. Um, nobody is able to wake him up. Oh, good. Zaji's actually having pretty good AI today. Uh, ah. Upper on the right people, so I don't really need upper in this fight. Okay. We're pretty much home free in the final. Uh, if I get like more than two rounds into the last fight coming up here without Hero dying, then I'm pretty much safe. Neris can try to ruin it by spamming Snowstorm. That's about all that can go wrong here. You say Pachisi can be approved upon, but they didn't improve upon it in Dragon Quest V DS. Oh wait, no, no. You start off uppering yourself. Yabo, heal. Marilel, put the slime knights to sleep. Uh, okay. Everything's fine. Two uppers. Wonder Rock Hero. Keep sleeping the slime knights. Glad you don't wake up the slime knights. you to take care of the slime knights for me. Hero's gonna wake him up. I 
Magic back. Okay. Another snowstorm. I think she's out of magic now, though. I think magic back and two snowstorms wipes her out, right? Oh, she's got 23 total. Might have a little more. Dodgy, I did not see who he uppered. I need to be paying attention to that too, because upper can only raise your defense power oops, by 200 total flat. So once I cap out, I can't cast it on myself anymore, so I can't refresh the duration, and I have no choice but to wait for it to run out. And since her only means of damaging me right now is physical damage, if she really is out of magic, I don't want to uh, run out of upgrades. I have my defense reset. I think we're good, though. My defense reset. No, it's not. It's been gathered. And okay, here's good for at least three more attacks. Two more attacks. Okay, we got her. That's pretty good. Not using any leaves in the tournament is good. Yeah, DQ6 and 7 have pretty much the same class system. I don't know how similar they are besides that, but... As far as your character growth goes, it could 6 and 7 can definitely be compared. Alright, I still have my wizard ring and I still have two world leaves, so I'm not going to go save the game before this boss. As long as I don't lose all of those things uh, dying to them, I'm not going to regret that. Based on what actions you're taking. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Unless you're talking about how it's obnoxious that one battle gives you one point. In which case I would agree. It'd be better if it were more like uh, FF5's ability point or job point system. Because I really don't like that this game incentivizes you to just grind on complete trash to rank up your classes. This is the wrong way, isn't it? It's the left side. Strength seed in this treasure chest. Use the strength seed on the hero. You've got a leaf, you've got a leaf. How's your drain? Ooh, missed a Should be good. Ah, uh, spider webs. Mm hmm. You remember those spider webs I bought? This is why I bought them. This boss is very scurry. We do not want it to take actions if we can avoid it. Now I'm going to give four of these spider webs to Hero. That'll give Hero four chances to rob it of an action. While Maribel's trying to put it to sleep. Yeah, why wouldn't they throw everybody up here to just, you know, storm the upstairs, kill this guy, get Fosse back on her seat? Oh well, I'll take Fosse. Is 
that right? Yeah. Um, you sleep. Oh, you. Bossy thing is gonna hit everybody. Okay. And tangled in the spider web. I'm gonna have Hero Parry. Wonder Rock. Zap. I don't want Hero to wake him up. Physical attack. No, I'm just gonna have. Ow! Shoot. Okay, well. No Marital's doing this turn. My bad. Another spider web. Another bark. Ah, I meant to sleep, not so. Oh, well, sap hit. Worth. How much the thread? Better with a bark. Sleep. Victoria can also cast uh, the magic wall ability that Evil Mech had, which makes sap a lot less likely to hit and sleep as well. Um. Everybody just heal themselves this turn. Here it is too. Bossy, damn it. She woke him up. Cast your snowstorm. Snowstorm doesn't wake him up. Okay. Um. Okay, we're gonna start doing physical damage now. Wait for a second, Sap. Storm. Here is gonna do good damage regardless. Good, we got both saps on him. So, Gabo can attack two. Maribel can attack, why not? Just all beat him up. He's got like 700 HP max. Uh, should be doing about 100 damage a turn. Even if Maribel's not doing damage. Pretty fast. Hopefully, we haven't seen uh, Antoria's worst attack yet. Fortunately. Okay, dead. Good. This is a pretty good Dharma segment, really. <clears throat> the lucky panel was kind of slow. We had one death to in up and guns. Um, but that's all expected. Here. So yeah, coming up here, well, first of all, wrap-up of the Dharma story. Um, the whole tournament we did, that was essentially the second step of their plan to give people their power back. You do the Soul Sword, stab five people with it, then you gotta get through the tournament, and then Antoria just owns you. Um, but we uh, came out on top against Antoria. So... Yeah, we restored everything, whatever. Everyone's happy now. But the important thing is that right now we're about to grind for a bit. Because we just unlocked the class system like we were talking about. And like we were talking about, the uh, job system in this game kind of just has you grinding on garbage to learn your skills. So I need to fight like something like 80 fights. Maybe it's over 100. I don't know. It's... Uh, it's like 15 and then 30 and then like 60 more. Not many fights. It's gonna take about 50 to 55 minutes from right now until that's done. So if anybody has any like actual errands you need to leave the computer and take care of. As much as I don't want to tell you to stop watching the stream, this is your best chance. All you're going to miss is the beginning of the magic carpet quest, where we pick up the fake carpet from Minter. Then we won't get the real carpet for a few hours still, after Gracchus. Alright, yeah, so to start this off, I'm going to change Hero to Dancer Class.
Gabo is going to become Thief Class. And Maribel is going to be a Mage. Gabo is just on Thief to get one skill, the knockdown skill, which will let me punt some enemies out of the fight. Um, Hero is on Dancer specifically to get... Just mage. Specifically to get Sword Dance, which is an attack that essentially lets you attack three times in one turn. And, uh... Yeah, Maribel is basically gonna Master Mage. We're gonna take it all the way to Boom. How we choose which characters get which classes, that's kind of based on uh, their base stats. Yeah, did I catch everything? Oh, I forgot the land shard. I need to go back for that real quick. There's a shard in the penal town. I'm good now. No encounter punishing me for having to backtrack. But, um... Yeah, one of my complaints about this type of class system where... You know, the class you pick applies a scalar to all your stats. It's something that some people in chat were kind of touching on, but... You know, you, if you make Maribel a warrior, she's gonna suck at it, because she doesn't have any strength. Um... So it's, you know, it, the warrior class being applied to her character is going to give you more of her worst stats and less of her good stats. And just make her bad overall. So, the characters are kind of pigeonholed by their basic stats already. I think these slimes are kind of looking at each other. But, yeah, like comparing it to FF5, uh, the FF5 characters, while they have slight differences in their base stats, they're not radically different. You can make any character be any class and it's viable. But, you know, if you make Maribel be a physical class in this game, you're gonna regret it. <laughs> the dog is sneezing. Are you okay, dog? You can't get up? Can't get up off the couch? Maybe you just need to keep napping more? I wish I could nap. I have to play this game for 12 more hours. Why don't you play for an hour? Dogs can't play video games. I've tried. Alright, but this is all that's gonna happen if you, uh... If you're curious what you're gonna be missing if you have to get up for a bit. Charge, charge. Oh. He's not MP, my bad. I'm basically gonna set my controller to auto fire, and I'm gonna walk up and then down, and then up and then down again until I get a fight. And then after the fight, uh, I'll do it again. I'm probably gonna try to eat some food while I do this. Why is the dog with an AGDQ? Okay. I guess I just didn't train him well enough then. Up, would you like to do the grind for me? His ears perked up, he's thinking about it. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, the boomerangs really trivialize the combat in this. The next grind segment that we have after we get Ira is kind of the same thing, except instead of auto-firing, I have to actually menu to sword dance. <laughs> Wish this previous version said orchestras. It is a very common opinion that people want more orchestra soundtracks in the Dragon Quest games. I don't know why. 
I like the uh, synthetic ones more, almost uniformly. I think DQ8 soundtrack is better on PS2 than 3DS. I think it just works better inside a video game. <clears throat> like, there's more sharpness to the notes and more contrast, I guess. It could also just be, like, the mixing of the orchestral parts, I don't know. It just sounds kind of weird to me in a lot of cases, like it sounds like I'm listening to music while playing a video game, instead of the two blending together better. Yeah, basically the opposite of what you just said. <laughs> Silver slimes in this game? You can kill metal slimes, yeah. They don't show up until a little bit later, and I don't have good tools for killing them. But, um... I think two worlds after this is the earliest I can find a metal slime, maybe three worlds after. I don't remember if they're in Crage or if you can't find them until Litter Red. But if I find them, I probably won't fight them, unless they're alone. Um, but when I get to Coastal, the t lighthouse there has metal babbles in it, and by the time I get there, I will have tools for fighting them. So I'll fight those guys if I happen to run into them. If not, I won't kill any metal enemies until the final dungeon when we fight some king metals. Oh, the final dungeon's still in 11 hours away, huh? I haven't been paying attention to where I'm at in this. This first phase of the grind is about five minutes long, so I should be about done with it. The next phase is ten minutes long, the phase after that is fifteen minutes long. start the magic carpet quest. Oh. So down here to Mazar. I don't know exactly when this town unlocks. I'm guessing with Dharma, but I'm not sure about that. This is the wrong place. I need to go to the bar first. Here though, got this pirate shirt. I may not need that because you have a clip in it. <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah. yeah, so I mentioned that when you take a class, it applies a multiplicative scalar to all of your stats. Dancer class lowers my hero's strength so much that the string seed didn't seem to affect him. Because it does still add one or two to his base strength value, but had no effect on his value after the dancer scalar was applied. His dancer cuts your strength by like half. It's really not a good class.
Yeah, if I do kill a Metal Slime, it probably won't even give me a level. If I fight it, it'll kind of just be to be for fun. Metal Babbles are important, though. Because a Metal Slime gives about a thousand XP. That kind of helps, but in the long run, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Right before the final boss, I would like to kill two King Metals, which are worth 30,000 each. I would like to kill two or three of them. And a Metal Babble is worth about 10,000. If I kill a couple Metal Babbles, I can get away with fewer Kings. But Metal Slimes don't really help in the long run. I'm going to get a few thousand XP off of this grind, too. That, that's the chest behind it. Hooray. It's not who gets that. Present Dharma. So all that happened there in Minter Ter Mazar. Um that dude whose name I don't remember has the magic carpet. He's been trying to give it to people. Um hoping that they can help revive the legendary hero. However, uh nobody's able to fly on it. So he assumes that, you know, they just, they must not be the ones who are the ones to wake up the hero, right? So he gives it to us and we're like, oh yeah, well, we're definitely the real chosen ones, you know, we're, we'll be able to use this carpet. We take it outside and it doesn't work. So that's where we're at right now. In a bit, we're going to find out that his maid has actually hidden the carpet so that he doesn't just frivolously give it away to somebody who can't use it. <laughs> and uh, she'll give it to us if we show her a certain item that I won't get for a while. Uh, there's something else to do in here, right? Nope. Later. Back to the grind. Ten more minutes. Thirty-six battles. Um. The reason we got the magic carpet now is because I needed that healer heart item which allowed me to put Gabo into the healer class, as in heal slime. Um, as you can guess, the healer class learns heal all, heal more, heal us. Um, that's how Gabo becomes our class healer, for the our party healer for the rest of the run. So. Yeah, 36 more battles here. Um, and the goal in this uh, specific segment is to get Hero to uh, rank 5 Dancer. Because to learn Sword Dance, you need to get rank 5 Dancer and then immediately after rank 5 Warrior. Or the other way around. Doesn't matter which one you do first, they just have to be consecutive. And it's kind of silly that they put such a very good skill as a hybrid class that you can get this easily. A lot of the, like, differences in the routing for the 3DS version revolve around the fact that Sword Dance doesn't exist in that version. Some enemies might have it, but you can't get it on your characters.
Oh, you found the Metal Hands in DQ11? Yeah. I grinded to 99 on Metal Hands because I never found the Malicious King Metals. So I just used the Metal Hands in uh, whatever the name is of the dungeon. The section that looks like it's the uh, World Tree. And I feel like grinding on hands there was not much slower, if at all, versus what everybody else does using that pep power that turns all the enemies into metal slimes. Um, and it's fewer steps. <laughs> I've watched people use the pep power, because speedruns do it, they use that pep power to turn everything into metal slimes, and then they leave and they change to 2D mode, and then they get pep powered up, and then they change back to 3D mode, and like that seems like such a pain. Why not just sit here and chill out, vibe, kill some hands? I don't know. I would order lunch, but Haptical kept making fun of me for eating pizza instead of cucumbers. So, I bought a sandwich this time. Not a cucumber sandwich. I hate cucumbers. No, the sandwich does not have cucumbers, and you can tell that the sandwich does not have cucumbers on it because it is not currently in the garbage. That's actually not fair. Cucumbers are really easy to pick off. Not like they leave gross juices all over your sandwich if you pick them off. stocks for not liking cucumbers or the original romancing saga, then I don't want stocks. The market doesn't work, and down with capitalism in those cases, if those things are true. I should probably disclaim that that is my own opinion, and that, uh, that the people behind the channel RPG Limit Break do not, you know, they're not on board with down on, with capitalism. That's that's me, and that's only me if I have to like cucumbers and romancing saga. Both of those things could just not exist, and I think the world would be a better place. Even if no cucumbers means pickles are gone now too, like that's fine. Three or four more minutes left on the screen, we can start eating them.
That's true. You get the hot takes during this split, and then after the split, all you get is Dune. So. Nah, seven's not my favorite Dragon Quest. I'd probably give that the four, but I have nostalgia bias fueling that. If I were being more objective, I'd probably say eight or five. And then probably eleven and seven after. Maybe three in there somewhere. I don't know. But definitely all the rest of those numbers are underneath the ones that I just mentioned. Kind of nebulous above that line. I would definitely put six at the bottom, followed by nine, and then build up from there. Probably one above nine. What's left? Two. Two, the only other number I haven't said. Those are my bottom four. What was the question? <laughs> I think the question was just, is 7 your favorite? I don't know if I'd really say 6 is bad, it's just... Whenever I play it, it doesn't feel like I'm playing a Dragon Quest game. So I would definitely say it is my least favorite Dragon Quest game. Nine kind of similar line. Get back here, Flora J. Nine has things that actively bug me, though. Like most of the story. Oh, that's... we're done. Okay, sweet. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, we are almost immediately going back in there. We just need to go back to present Dharma. And change Heroes Class to Warrior. is gonna get sword dance off this, Maribel is gonna get boom, Gabo is gonna get heal all. Oops. Then we'll do some more grinding later when we have Ira and Melvin. without a guide? Does really nobody tell you to go find a world leaf to help the prince? I know if you're playing the fan translation of the SFC2, um, the game just consumes itself at that point. The gold school of justice. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I did a playthrough of Dragon Warrior 2 where I made sure that there was somebody in each town that told me where to go next. 
Maybe it was DQ3. I was pretty sure DQ2, you can, like, with any time before you leave a town, I'm pretty sure you can have a lead on where to go next. You just have to talk to every single person. grinding here. We'll continue with the game. Uh, heal more. Next time Gabo ranks up, he will reach a tier that is called Heal All. Sometimes that confuses me. But that is not Gabo learning Heal All. Someone mentions it in passing. That should be good enough, though. I don't want an RPG where I talk to a person, they tell me which specific person to talk to next, that person sends me directly to the next goal. I want to have to talk to people a little bit and get some information, you know? Otherwise, why do the other NPCs even exist? Why are they in this town? It makes it look a little more alive, but they're completely pointless if there's no reason to talk to them. And I was encountering that the last time I played DQ11. I just didn't want to talk to anybody because I knew I didn't need to. And my first time through the game, it was kind of cool. Getting the, uh, like, just the setting stuff from talking to people, but the second time through, I just, I just didn't want to. Because the game didn't give me any incentive to do it. There were a lot of things that I didn't want to do my second time through. But I think it's fine, like if your character gets sick in this town, that some random person in the town might have the answer to it. Not necessarily somebody standing right there on the screen you're already on. And then it's fine to me if they don't point you directly to the solution, if they just say, Oh, you need a world leaf. Maybe you look west? I don't know. And then you go west and maybe there's a person there that gives you more specific directions. Something like that. I don't think it has to be like, stay at the inn. Oh, the prince is sick and the prince is telling you, go to these specific coordinates and pick up this item. <laughs> That's just a little too handholdy. I want to have to explore in this fantasy world you've created. The world should be interesting enough that I want to explore it and I want to learn more about it. But it isn't always. Romancing Saga. You're right, I shouldn't use DQ2 for that. I'll use Romancing Saga instead. There's only two RPGs that I can think of that I have ever quit playing just because I was bored. Final Fantasy XII and Romancing Saga. Like, I just felt completely uninvested in both of those games when I quit playing them. I at least made it like 50 hours into FF12 though. But Saga, I was only like 10 hours in and I felt like I'd accomplished absolutely nothing.
I've never played a Final Fantasy since. I probably should, I just don't want to. I almost played 15. I got real close to playing 15, but I didn't. I own 13. But I watched like 10% of a playthrough of 13 and I just, I'm not into it. Where are we at? Nine more minutes on the screen, okay. I just watched my timer for this grand. I don't really count how many battles we've had. When I get within about five minutes of the end of the grind, I start paying attention because I know that Maribel will learn Boom with four uh, fights to go. Hero getting Sword Dance means I got one more fight to go, and then Gabo heal all means I'm done. I do hate playing some RPGs. Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite Final Fantasy game, probably, but it's all, also I think it's the worst Final Fantasy. <laughs> but it's fun to think about. Think about how did they make this game so bad? How could these ideas that they had be, you know, executed on differently to make a good game out of this? You know? FF2 is pretty bad too, yeah, but FF2 isn't as fun to think about as 8. I really like the first disc of FF8, and then it's just like, I don't know. I feel like FF8 and FF9 both, they had the beginning and they had the end, and they weren't sure how to bridge them. But that's more obvious in 9 than 8. The middle of FF9 is just like, hollow, and then suddenly you're at the end. And it's like, how did we get here again? I like 9 a lot. I, or rather, I think 9 is a much better game than 8, but 8's story is just wild. Feels like a kid playing with action figures, making up each story beat as he goes without planning ahead, and then suddenly time compression. They knew how to get from here to there. Let's just put more islands in. There it is, there's the fake one. That's Gabo becoming heal all. That is not Gabo learning heal all. Alright, these fighter or these these fights are starting to go faster now that I'm soldier class and it's making it harder for me to eat my lunch. I need Maribel and Gabo to go first. Gabo learned rip. Hmm. I don't like this suggestion.
I think I've got all the levels I'm getting out of this. <clears throat> There's eight? Yeah, Gabo might make it to nine or ten. I did mention this, but the whole reason that we are grinding in this specific place is because um, you these battles will count toward my job levels until my characters reach level 14. So it just makes perfect sense to grind here. The grinding stops us at level 13, and we move on. got a Walmart salad here that I'm kind of regretting. But they gave me the world's tiniest fork to eat this thing with. I want to run to the kitchen and get a real fork. I feel like the older I get, the less I feel like 100%ing a video game, but I also feel like developers are starting to put in a lot more time wasters into their video games. And when I see those, my motivation to 100% something just gets shot out the window. <clears throat> if you've ever watched me play a modern video game casually, you probably hear me whine about sparkly spots. Just walking around town, there's sparkly things on the ground I gotta walk over and pick up, because what if it's something that's actually valuable? I know the last thousand things I picked up were not valuable, but what if that one is? And I hate that. I hate that I can't just get myself to ignore them. Because I know the game is balanced around me picking up every one of them that I see, but it also, you know, how much time did I spend in infinite wealth picking up sparkly stuff? 10 hours? 15 hours? Easily 10. Metal Gear Solid 5 is probably... That is probably the video game that got me to hate modern video game design. That was the last time that I took time off work for a video game release. I'm probably not doing that again. That's the biggest waste of PTO that I've ever spent. Okay, we should be there now. Where are we at? Like, within two minutes we should be done. Boom, okay, four battles to go. being structured as mission based. That I don't mind, I just mind when half the missions are complete filler. Like Metal Gear Solid 5, almost none of the missions matter at all. Kaz is sitting there screaming about how all these people are connected to Cypher, but like, Cypher doesn't show up in the game. <laughs> Cypher isn't in the game. The game is objectively unfinished. There is no ending to chapter two. There is no chapter three. If you bought the collector's edition of chapter three, they gave you a DVD that has some footage on it from unfinished cutscenes of what chapter three was gonna be. It's, <laughs> and people defend the game as being exactly what Kojima wanted it to be when that exists. The day the game was released, people had that DVD in their hands and they knew, but people still somehow defend Metal Gear Solid V. I don't understand. How can I ever get excited for a video game release ever again when I know that the trailers can make the game look so good and then the game can be that bad? 
My heart. They can't take it. I'll deal with DQ12 when it comes out. Not a minute sooner. What am I doing? Oh, we're all changing to Maribel class. This is the best part. Maribel. Wait, no, not you. You're the only one that doesn't. My bad. Gebo becomes Maribel class. Yeah, I have to assume that uh, Kojima knew he was going to get cut off before he was happy with MGS5, so he just blew the budget on other things. Then they probably gave him a date and said it had to launch on this date, and he's like, okay, whatever. Shove something out the door and I'll go call up Norman Reedus. Stairs though. Land shirt in here. Did I already get this? I feel like I did. Now I walked in here on accident in the past. No, okay. Let me go down here and do this. I really feel like I did this. Oh, I did. Okay. That was the past. This game is like the effect that resetting a lot on Dragon Warrior 4 has on me, where I forget what I have and have not done in this run yet. Except, it's only one run. But we keep bouncing between past and future. Past and present. 96 and 96, huh? is the best gameplay. I think that's debatable. MGS5 is very, very easy if you use all the tools you have available to you, but it kind of lends itself well to, um, like, challenge playthroughs if you don't. Knock down the bandit. What does Maribel do? She casts boom. There it is. <clears throat> Please, no bug powder. Oh my goodness. This is the only way I lose this fight, and it's happening two runs in a row. Yeah, but please snap out of it. Do you have the right weapon equip? No. Um, I don't really have a way to get rid of confusion. Oh, great, you're as confused too. Okay. He knocked uh, Gabo out of it. Okay. Put down the bandit, please. Okay. I think Hero's still asleep, though. Okay. I'm just gonna heal all Hero. Nope. No, I'm not. Dying here isn't very punishing. <laughs> that sucked. And it confused two of my party members. Okay, yeah. I don't even need to go heal. Dance. Knock down, please. Boom. Okay. 
Okay, there. It's that easy. I'm not a hero this way. Really not a bad fight, but very specifically, if the bandit goes before Gabo on turn one and confuses him, uh, it can go south. But it's a marathon, so of course that's what happened. Oops. Wait, what happens now? Really? Let's do this again. Alright. Now you follow this guy to the hideout. Oh, I guess you don't have to follow him uh, after you, you hear him say it once. The password is go to hell. And we can go in. Here's the bandit leader. enemies are really funny. There's a like a white recolor of them that was a random encounter earlier. And I didn't fight them, but if you do fight them um... Oh, I have to walk out because Mirabelle didn't have 8 MP. Uh, they've got like they're kind of like demonites from uh, DQ4 <clears throat> where they try to cast spells they don't have enough MP to cast, except they've got animations of it the spell backfiring which is really funny. In fact, I think that guy can do it. He might have done it once or twice in that fight. I think he has Giga Slash and can't afford it. So he like swings at you and his sword breaks and he picks it up and fixes it. Entering Dune. This is the island of Dune, no relation. It's just a sandy place.
There's a couple other good ones, though. I know there's one where he tries to cast, like, one of the lightning spells. And he holds his sword up and just gets hit by lightning. <clears throat> but there's four types of those guys, too. That's the hero version, the foo hero. There's also a mage, a priest, and a one with an axe. I don't know what he's called. Soldier? Foo warrior? I don't know. Foo fighter? Alright, so on the continent of Dune here, the uh, castle has been attacked by monsters. And uh, all the people have been taken away. They're being forced to work on the evil statue west across the river. And um, that guy wandering around in the castle is kind of sulking about it, trying to figure out what's going on <clears throat> and what he can do about it. There's a strange mix of cowboys and like turban guys in this area. Yes, two, uh, two different competing fashions. That's weird. Really? Okay, if you hold up and to the right, you walk out of town there. Alright, cool. Where am I going? Chief, I think. There's the chief. Yeah, it's like a mixture of Western U.S. and, uh, like, Middle Eastern. Just in the bed, get all my magic back. The next island or two, I do want to fight a couple of random encounters, because, um, Hero will take a couple more battles to get his, uh, Evil Slash ability than whoever it is that it's their thing um, before him in the next grind. It's part of why he stayed on Warrior instead of changing to Mariner. I should have explained uh, the reason I went to Mariner class is because it's one of the few classes that has decent stats on it. I mentioned Dancer is just terrible. Um, yeah, and most of the other classes just aren't better. But Mariner gives a, I think, a slight boost to HP. Maybe it's even on HP. And then, uh... A little boost to agility. And at cost of, like, MP and something else that you don't need. Maybe base defense? I don't know. All, the, um, all of the modifiers on it, though, are, like, between minus 10 and plus 10%. It's not a big difference. <clears throat> But compared to, like, you know, if I left somebody on Mage class, they would have really low HP, really low strength, and not get much in return. Max MP is just not worth sitting on a class. <clears throat> Which is really unfortunate. I wish the classes had better stats because it really incentivizes you to do your grinding and then pick a class to go fight bosses with rather than just sit on a class and casually fight things as you go through the game. And yeah, this is the PS1 version, played on a PS2 Slim. Yeah, I'm pretty sure 3DS didn't add any classes to it. This has all the main character classes, it has uh, the monster classes, if those are what you're referring to. We actually used two monster classes in this speedrun. I already got Gabo started on the healer class, and later Melvin's gonna have the Lipsy class, so that I can get the cyclic ability and use it on one or two bosses. Hopefully two. But one for sure. I'm 
run to the kitchen and grab something to drink during this dialogue coming up. Because my throat's starting to hurt. I've been talking for seven and a half hours and I was complaining about my throat one hour in. <laughs> That's fine, I don't have anything I need to do tomorrow. I'll gladly take excuses not to talk to people. <laughs> So in case Hadid can't hear these very strong winds, we walk to the door and he's like, oh, there's very strong winds out there. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> That little scene there. Mirabelle's complaining about having to dig graves for these people, and Hadid's like, okay, I'll dig the graves, you drag the bodies. <laughs> now, the max party members is four, but we only have three right now. You don't really have control over who's in your party for quite a while. At the very end of the game, you can pick between five party members. You get to pick four out of five. But... For about the next three or four hours of this speedrun, we're only going to have these three characters. Till it's time to resurrect the legendary hero. Yeah, I guess he was benched. It's Maribel. There are times on uh, the Nico leaderboard that have comments that mention that they use Mirabelle in their team, but I'm not sure what those routes look like. I think they do more grinding early on and then ditch Ira instead of grinding Ira for Sword Dance. But I'm not sure what they pick up to make that route viable to not have a second Sword Dance. I know it's more battles than the route that I'm doing here. Which is also the only route I've ever seen High Spirits use. Pretty sure I gave this uh, island a pretty low rating in my tier list of all the islands. It's very long for what's going on here. There's a lot of political drama here with the family. Hadid is supposed to take over as the village chief, but he doesn't want to right now. He's busy. Because apparently, if you are the village chief, you can't also go find the queen. So, that's kind of Hadid's whole thing. He's just like... <clears throat> he's mad at the queen because he thinks the queen sold him out. Um, he thinks he's the reason that or he thinks the queen is the reason that everybody got abducted from the castle, but doesn't realize that the queen was kidnapped as well. And here, when we defeated that Bone Rider, he dropped this locket that they are now discovering has a message in it from the queen. Saying... This. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh... He says the evil statue has been completed, which is the Sphinx across the uh, the river. 
Um, apparently, building an evil statue makes there be more monsters. For whatever reason, Hadid is looking for Tyrannos, who is a water-based river god of some kind. Um, I don't know what he expects Tyrannos to do, but when we find Tyrannos, all he does is give us a ride across the river. We probably could have just swam it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I don't know, maybe I can do this part first. There's another old man I need to talk to first, though. Or, not necessarily first, but before I leave. First, I gotta talk to this bag. <clears throat> the chief also gave me this dune charm. Oops. I don't want to talk to you. Um, if I show the dune charm to people, they'll say more to me. Not sure how much of this information is actually important that they give me. Did I show the Dune Charm to the Chief? I'm gonna talk to them again just to make sure. <laughs> um. Yeah, even though he is the person that gave me the charm, if I show him the charm, he tells me more stuff. favorite islands. I don't know if I believe Mario when he gives his opinions on islands. I feel like he just took my tier list and turned it over and then he just says that that's his list. Maybe if he ever streams the game again, he'll be able to get a better read on his actual opinions. the world's record holder of the English version of the 3DS version of this game. First out of two people who have completed friends of it. Compared to me, who is a mere third place out of three people on the PlayStation version. There's a lot of hot competition in DQ7. <laughs> And then on those two boards, High Spirit's on both of them, so it's only four people between the two games. But like I mentioned earlier, the uh, Nico boards, the Japanese boards for JP DQ4 or DQ7 PS1, has 41 people on it. <laughs> its record is three hours faster than the English record, though. Yeah, Slurpee did a run, but it's not on the board. I guess I should count Slurpee, too. Because I don't think Mario's run's on the board, either. He's... <clears throat> um... Alright, let's go find Tyrannos. It's Rexwood, right? Yeah. Good guess. Alright, so the villagers were describing Tyrannos as having a great golden horn. If I go in here, uh, where the skull was that we saw earlier, I can talk to this scholar here. And he rambles about it for a minute, and then we say, hey, can I have that? <clears throat> and I'm not entirely sure why we want it. I would consider this to be kind of a plot hole. I don't know why uh, 
because I mean they're looking for the living Tyrannus in the past. This obviously tells us that Tyrannus died at some point, but I don't know, how does that help us? But of course it ends up helping us. <laughs> Yeah, we show the scholar the dune charm and he says oh wait you really have been back in time okay i want to go back in time too you can have the fossil if we go back in time together so i don't know sure i'll take him Yeah, we put the gigantic fossil just right in our pocket. <clears throat> this isn't DQ4 through 6. We don't have a wagon that we can throw the fossil in. It's quite literally just in our pockets. <clears throat> so we take the scholar up here, drop him off at the castle. He gets all excited. And we're gone. We'll just leave him to it. Now oh, we need to go back here. about to get another CGI cutscene coming up in about, I don't know, five minutes? He's gotten sick in the five minutes we were gone. <clears throat> Go down here. The deed shows up. Doesn't say anything. Accidentally talked to this guy. is the answer to that question. They shut down the 3DS eShop last weekend, or you could have bought it there. I'm pretty sure at this point the PS1 version is cheaper than the 3DS version. I should have checked some game prices before the eShop shut down, see if they like skyrocketed over the last few days. All the DS games were already pretty expensive. I don't know if you could have bought the regular DS ones, but I, I have 7 and 8 digital. Yeah. Here's Hadid. Alright, the chief has died. That's what all that text amounted to. Chief's dead. <clears throat> Went up after they announced it. That makes sense, too. May as well.
All right, I'm gonna stand up for one second here because this is like 70 seconds. I don't have to touch the controller. Be right back. Okay. Gotta wait for him to leave. Kind of a funny thing that recurs a lot in these Dragon Quest games, especially the earlier ones, that I'm sure isn't like an intended recurring thing, but just the fact that Sometimes after a cutscene, a character will be walking away, and you're just frozen standing there until they're done leaving. <clears throat> sometimes they make you stay, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just make the character move faster than you so you can't catch them. But right there with the dinosaur leaving, it's just like five seconds of, okay, can we go? Am I, am I really waiting on this? <laughs> Also, yeah, Sphinx name. Big Wagon Wheel song, the one where you don't have the whole team together yet. Past DQ7 would be up there though. <clears throat> the trick of throwing things on the pedestals, there is no trick, it's impossible. You just go up next to it. No, that's not how that works. Impossible. I said it was impossible seven hours ago, seven and a half hours ago. <clears throat> I'm sticking with that. But I am going to remember to put the Dune Charm in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was one year where we had a DQ Sword speedrun in this event. Oh, I'm talking to it. I have to actually use the item. That's so inconsistent with this game. That's fine. 
We got more Sphinx thing. What? Stop reading it. Shut up. Okay. So using the Dune Charm opens this door down here. And you just throw these things in the opposite corner. See, it's impossible. Told you, impossible. You can check the tape. I snuggled up next to it. I wasn't centered, but... You know. See? It's impossible. It's impossible. And check the tape on that one. I was definitely... I wouldn't not be. Why? Why? Why can't you just go on the pedestal? Watch out for those stairs hiding behind that wall. You step on them, you reset the whole puzzle. Look, it clipped inside. Explain that. Explain how I clipped it inside. You can't. Puzzle's impossible. That's all there is to it. So there's a puzzle in this room, I think, where you can, um, there's these spikes blocking that staircase down there. Is it that staircase? I also see a door there. I don't know. I was going to run through the spikes. No, there's another staircase. It's probably the button that lowers the spikes. I don't know. Maybe it's the button tutorial. Oh, hey, the queen. I don't know how Hadid got the door open, but he did. God, look how young he looks in that emote. <laughs> wow. How long have we all been on this website? Where did our lives go? I didn't fall down three times like last time. Hooray! I'm pretty sure this one's just $500, but I'm gonna open it out of habit. $350, yeah, that could a thousand percent be skipped with the lucky panel minutes. Now, Seto Kaiba's the boss of this one. Um, his company's not doing so well, so he kidnapped an entire castle and made them build a uh, evil statue. But they didn't have any dragon parts, so they made it look like a sphinx. Did you open the box, hero? Collision in this game just makes you randomly turn to the side when you're trying to face something. It kind of reminds me of the weird behavior in Zelda 1 when you're doing one frame taps trying to do clips or whatever. You tap up and you'll face to the right. I should probably have fought that. I still probably need a couple fights. I don't know. Incidentally, boss fights do not count toward your class level ups. I don't know why. You would think they would. But any uh, non random encounter like this one doesn't count. has any interest in the Millennium Puzzle. But yeah, the Millennium Puzzle isn't until Disc 2.
Actually, I think there was a movie where he might have had the puzzle. I don't know. that dance it's just so weird oh good thing you will come all right hey guys <clears throat> so Seto's here he's just kicking Hadid my magic is unstoppable does he have any magic I thought he just attacks me. I don't know. But regardless, he gives me a minute. He doesn't fight me immediately, so I'm gonna heal first. favorite ability in Dragon Quest Monsters 2 because it was ridiculously OP. Okay. Probably wouldn't have killed Mirabelle where she was. Unless the charge up does affect her. Massacre is basically a randomly targeted critical hit. In some games it can even target the person using it. But it can attack your allies if you have any allies. But he doesn't, so it's OP. But I have allies, so you're gonna defeat him with the power of friendship. Yeah. Defeat Seto with the power of friendship. This really is you, yeah. I'd like to leave the desert now. Yeah, once they started animating the sprites for monsters, there are, like, I would say most monsters that have uh, critical hit potential have a different animation that they use when the move could be a critical hit. <clears throat> like Kandar in DQ3 holding his axe up above his head when he's using his crit move. took the eyes out of the statue, but they were load-bearing eyes, so the statue fell apart. Somehow we fell all the way into the river. They fished the queen out, they fished Hadid out. <clears throat> oh, there's us. Nobody helps us out. Hadid's over here, he's kind of dead, but he'll get over it.
Yeah, at least they were floating on their backs, not just drowning. Okay, so we're gonna go back into the storage room. There's a cell that's unlocked in here now that's got a shard in it. That is the whip. That's something else that I can skip with all the money I have. It is a crazy long run. We're almost halfway there, though. Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, what do we do here, right? I'm gonna go back here because we left the scholar here. Maribel probably should have cast something. Hey, Ice Spirits, thanks for the raid. Uh, talk to the nerd. Talk to the nerd. All right, he gives us the package. I forgot about that. Yeah, so that package I give to the other guy that's working at the dig site. Not the guy charging money to see the horn, but the guy that's actually standing in front of the ladder, preventing you from getting into the dig site. East around this continent. We go to Dune Village. It is important that we do not step into the castle or we get roped into a feast. <clears throat> In fact, I'm going to get off over here so I don't even think about it. <laughs> you lose three minutes if you step in the castle. I've been climbing out of the pot lately. Bitcoin on Gambo. More land pedestals. Oops. I messed that one up a lot. Now for the island of Crage. We're halfway done with the pedestals. Nine completed out of 18. And this is a short one. So we'll be over the hump soon. <laughs> Disc two, here we come. That's right, yep. We're halfway to disc two. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm feeling like I might not fall asleep in the middle of the run today. Made it this far. First two hours and the last two hours are the hardest.
Well, this village is kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> there's this mist hovering over the city that's making everybody act funny. Um, they seem to all think that they are the demon lord. Um, and this guy is just kind of manipulating them. He's trying to get them to go cut down the tree that we just saw. The sacred tree. And the mayor had us check on that little elf girl who's just sleeping. <clears throat> I don't need to talk to him again, do I? I don't think I do. I think I just go right back to the tree after I see those morons run off toward it. Yep. Oh well. We got more mayor lore. So yeah, they're trying to cut down the tree. <clears throat> That's right, chop it down. The demon lord fears nothing. <clears throat> Wait, don't. And he's like, boom. Sir! Yes, I plan on standing in the way of you, the demon lord. Or foolish but courageous to defy me, the demon lord. Come on, I'll destroy all of you. Firebolt! That's all. Ah, huh, what do you think you're doing? That's nothing but a fake demon lord. Blaze most! What? How come I couldn't use that spell? It's like it's my turn. Explode it! That's weird. I lost my touch or something. Alright. So he's gonna fight us himself. And what is the name of this boss we're about to fight? That's right. Weird guy. And he's throwing his lamp at me. <clears throat> this guy should die in like two turns. Barely a boss fight. Okay. All right, he's out of here. And one by one, all of these little demon lords are gonna withdraw, say something edgy. You're nowhere near strong enough to beat me. I'm going to show you some mercy and withdraw for now. But next time, we won't be so nice. Shut up, dude. <clears throat> Alright. Yeah, the elf girl tells us kind of what's going on. The sacred tree has power to neutralize the effect of the poison that's in the well. But she just got beat up by the demon lord. I think she's being dramatic. I don't think that demon, that particular demon lord, my bad, had that much power. Getting a little ahead of myself. What? Oh, right, you have to actually use the item. Again, that's something that's very inconsistent in this game. I'd say it's about 50-50 when you're supposed to use an item to do something, whether you have to pull it out of your inventory or just press the interact button. And again, just take the take it out of my pocket. Here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so easy task, right? We just have to take this dew, the holy dew that we just used on her, and put it into the town well. Let's just go do that. Just gonna... Yep. What? Oh, do I have to talk to the mayor first? I have to talk to the mayor first, don't I? Fine. If I can look at him... Right from the foot of the 
If I would just read my notes for once in this room, it would tell me. Use Holy Dew on Mayor. Use Holy Dew on Well. Ah, the weird guy stops us. Hey everybody, these jerks are trying to put something in our well. It could be poison. You jerks. So now this is happening. <clears throat> the weird guy's solution to me putting something in the well was for them to just stand around it so that I can't possibly get through them. In no way, like, there, of, of course, there's no world where I could just, like, throw it over their heads or, like, shove them out of the way. Cast Blaze more on one of them. Weird guy specifically. Like, I could just kill weird guy, right? I don't think anyone would miss him. I'm gonna kill him in about two minutes anyway. But okay. We'll do it the hard way. I'll take that. From here, we just keep climbing up the ladders. And we will end up underneath the village water supply. That's right, within the well, there is another well. And within that well, there is a well lure. Great. Thanks, Dragon Quest 6.
Oh, it's evil wall, not wall door. So, yeah, this battle strategy pretty much gets us through the whole chapter. Just sword dance, more ball charge. Sleep. That's why I don't have a well, that's why I'm on city water, because I don't want to deal with the monsters. Also, people live inside Dragon Quest wells all the time, I don't want to deal with that. To go down there, like, every other week to make sure there's no squatters. One of the towns we head to in a couple of islands has their church inside the well. Probably the church of Dragon Quest VI. <laughs> you have a powerful sword dank, yeah. They didn't precisely describe what sword dance is, but it's four attacks for 75% power, so it's effectively three times as strong as a normal attack. So... It's going to be our main source of damage for the rest of the run. It's so easy to get and so strong that we're going to end up with two characters that have it. I want to heal before I fight this guy. I'm pretty indifferent. I may not have an option. He may just fight me here. Twins hits it himself. Twins and double. Twin hits it. Twins double. He doubled his attack power. Oh, it's supposed to snap this one? I don't care. Twin hits, by kill, whatever you want to call it, is pretty vital in a lot of Dragon Quest speedruns. We don't really bother getting it in this one, largely because it, on Sword Dance it only powers up the first attack. Yeah, he biumphed himself. Whoops, down the wall we go. Sorted that out. Let's go talk to the mayor. We're pretty much done here. We just gotta talk to a couple people and leave. That's the whole plot of this place though, is weird guy whose true form is wolf devil. And then this is probably the shard that the chat message I started reading is talking about. I would say this is the worst shard in the game. It's so easy to miss this. Because if you talk to the farmer before talking to the mayor, you don't get it. Incredibly useful item off of uh, the elf girl now. A branch made from the sacred tree. Or cut from the sacred tree, I guess. I don't know. My goodness, she talks a lot. There it is. The blessed staff. That item will cast heal more in battle. Very useful because we will not have high max MP totals in this room. Fine, I 
get it. I should have fought you. Okay. Who's got it, by the way? Bag? That's the wrong answer. I'll give it to Mirabelle for now. to Mazar. This is where we got the start of the uh, magic carpet quest. You gotta get a shirt out of here. Mirabella just starts screaming at this guy who's not anywhere around. Here's another evil well, but it's not the same evil well we just fought. This one only has a couple hundred HP, the other one was stronger than like 600 HP. in here. Grab the shard. <clears throat> oh, I'm not. No, I was not able to fly with the magic carpet. Give it back to him. Go check on Nicola. down to Crage. So, the Sacred Tree, um, as the girl mentions, is a sapling of the World Tree. So, as is common practice in Dragon Quest games, whenever I do not have any world leaves um, going forward, I can come back here and get one. There will be one laying on the ground. I like this upcoming island a lot. <clears throat> it's got a lot of good details in it. This is Litterred. <clears throat> and 
starting off here. Where'd that pirate should go? Fill it. I'll give it as axe as well. Marble, have room for those. Good. Upgrade the evade shirts into magic shirts. Magic skirt? I don't know. These shields I could potentially buy. I don't know. I don't need them. The middle game here is pretty easy. Pretty safe. I say that now, I'm gonna wipe to the Time Mage. <clears throat> An item in that dresser that I'm gonna skip because it's a helmet for a hero and I have a better helmet. The speedrun doesn't really demonstrate this very well because there's a lot of optional stuff you can look at in this town, but this town is essentially the movie Groundhog Day. Every time you go to the inn and wake up, uh, this girl will go down the stairs, she will trip, and you'll catch her. Um, what we saw in that scene before I went to the inn was that she had sprained her ankle and uh, from falling down the stairs that morning. And so, you go to the inn and it's like, oh, she fell down the stairs again? Like, she should be more careful. But, as you stay at the inn more times, you see that she does it again and again. But there are also a lot more things going on in town that uh, happen every day. For example, this guard says the bridge will be open tomorrow, there's the opening ceremony tomorrow, and... Says, what? You heard me? You heard that it was open today? Yeah, you heard wrong. But there's also around town, there's like somebody who lost their wallet, you have to find it for them. There's somebody who breaks a statue, and then you wake up the next day and it's not broken anymore. And uh, at least one or two other things like that. So it becomes very obvious that you're stuck in a time loop, you just have to find the right JRPG triggers to uh, progress yourself past it. And those triggers happen to be staying at the inn and uh, trying to go across the bridge. <clears throat> so, the guard told us I heard wrong. Ceremony's tomorrow. Let's go back and check. tell him this and then he says oh these theories of yours are strange you're starting to sound like Balok oh who's Balok well he's over there this right here is where I'm kind of likely to find a metal slime this area didn't find one there though fight at least this fight and one more and then I should be good on random encounters was high damage. That boom did over a hundred damage to those things. They must be weak to it. Oh. Really punishing me for my bad movement. this dude's house, he's got a really weird house. 
He's an inventor, inventor of, inventor of sorts. That's what I'm trying to say. Maybe they describe him as an architect. He does say he built the clock tower in town. He also builds a puzzle tower in the present. <clears throat> Somehow this guy gets the idea that the clock tower might have something to do with the time looping. Gave me a key, now I can get into the clock tower. Gunners, please. find when we go in this door? A lever, which naturally we will pull. JRPG protagonist, pull every lever. The clock has stopped. Everything's gotten quiet. As we have stopped the clock, we have also frozen time. You can see that sparkle on the right. That's the little girl next to it. Lost her wallet over there. somewhere. Wrong. Wrong pot. Wrong one. Evil pot. This battle background's cool though. That's fine. It's a hundred bucks. 180. All right. We're rich. Which I mean we're rich and don't need that money. version of this track is pretty good. Goes well with this area. I'm not looking at my notes right now. Am I going the right way? No. I was close. The big glowing light I stepped in as a full heal, HP and MP for my team restored. <clears throat> yeah, I've been getting kind of a lot of encounters. In this zone anyway. I think that chest is a canna box. Maybe a small metal. It's something I don't want. No. <laughs> this room's kind of a puzzle. You need it. Oh no, the first one's a can of box. 
Uh, the, this one. Oops. I'll back up and do the other one. <laughs> I'm not sure this was the magic potion. Dreamer, what if you read your notes for your 18 hour speedrun? Instead of just being like, I got this. Hmm. I'm probably gonna get two more fights, aren't I? Oh, don't step on that. Alright, we got a boss fight coming up here. Um, this boss fight can be smooth or it can be really, really annoying. Um, it's the Time Sage and two Maki Makis. Little imp dudes. What makes it annoying is that the Maki Makis, as long as they are alive, they have a chance to just completely reset the fight. Um, they have 230 HP each, so I need to kill them as fast as possible. Ooh, agility seed. Put my health here. Put these speed rings. Where's the other speed ring? There it is. Pump the plus staff with the wizard ring. Probably will not lose this fight, but it might take a while if they keep resetting it. Those magical skirts on Gabo and uh, Maribel, they don't even take damage from Ice Bolt. It gives pretty nice resist. Time Sage's boom doesn't even do too much. I think the one on the right's dead. No, that way. Now, now? There, come on, Maribel. Estimate is for just this game. We're almost halfway there. And now we're going to pick up another item that reinforces my statement earlier that the middle of this game is pretty comfy. Um, the time sand. So with his dying breath, 
The time sage there is like, ha, ah, well, you may have killed me, but time is going to loop forever unless somebody destroys this hourglass. So we destroy the hourglass. We take some of the sand with us. And uh, if I throw that on Gabo, then as long as Gabo doesn't die, I don't really have anything to worry about. Gabo is very fast. Uh, if a couple of characters die and I don't think reviving them is going to pan out, I can just throw the time sand. Reset the fight and not wipe and have to revive. Yeah, we defeat them. The next morning, Amy comes. Oh, she's so an oh, 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 she caught herself. All right, it is tomorrow. Welcome to tomorrow. <laughs> By the time this run ends, it's gonna be tomorrow. Anyway, let's go to the bridge ceremony. Get these people out of my way. This is one of the most unrealistic things in this game. The fact that two people in a big crowd would let you through. Why? Why would they do that? I don't care if you're the hero. I got here first. Now, there's also a subplot in this town that you kind of have to dig for, where it turns out Balok is Amy's father. Whatever. <laughs> Back to both of these guys. And we are done with Little Red. Optionally, um, now that the bridge is open, you can cross it and make your way to another form of Verdhim. But I hate Verdhim, so I'm not going there. <laughs> That's where you find out that, uh, what's her face? You know, the lady that, uh, like the guy who ran off, that she died alone too. But I don't care, I'm not going there. There's a couple of things you can get there that High Spirits gets in his PB that I just skip because it takes like seven minutes to get him. Uh, you can get a Strength Ring, which is seven strength for Hero for a while. Or you can get uh, two Agility Scarves, which is 15 more Agility for Gabo and Maribel. But you end up with two Agility Scarves anyway. So... It helps now, but I feel like you don't need the help now. Oh, really? I can bypass those buttons by walking down here. Okay, cool. Oh, also, I meant to push that other statue. That's why I never do that. Okay. I just assumed that the... Oh, egg. It's a frog. I just assumed the button stretched all the way to the other wall. Oh, it does. Never mind. Never mind, I'm dumb. 